Hello and welcome to the BNB show. My name is Brandon Kane, and my cohort here, my partner in arms, is going to be Seahawks Brandon Elson back in the house tonight. Welcome on back in, Brendan. How are we doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm doing pretty good. We are 12 days away, 12 days away from figuring out how much of this work ended up bearing out fruit at the end of it. We are indeed. Um, and I think at the very least, we're going to have a very good understanding of, uh, we don't know the direction Seattle's going to go here, Brendan, but I think we're going to get a good understanding of why they went the direction they went based on looking at some of these prospects, which is kind of some of the point of this too, on top of maybe predicting guys will be fits for Seattle, but also this guy came here. Yeah, that makes sense. They're thinking along, along these lines to do A, B, C, D, and E to cover something in a given place on this team. So um, it's been fun going through this and we're going to continue it on here today, Brendan, by looking at uh, no, a positional group that people tend to like to, to pay, pay close attention to, which is going to be the edge class. Mm -hmm. Really quickly off the gate, though, we do have a little bit of breaking news from our Seattle. It's been quiet the past couple of weeks, but we got a little bit, didn't we, here mm -hmm. with uh, a signing yesterday. Right. So, Lakin Tomlinson. Lakin Tomlinson. We're a little familiar with him. Used to play in the NFC West. Spent his best years in the NFC West with the 49ers. I know he was a guy that a lot of Seahawks fans would talk about. Whenever we play the Niners talking about, man, I hope that guy's a future Seahawk. Well, he is a future Seahawk. He is a current Seahawk, in fact. Uh, Lakin Tomlinson signs a one-year deal. We don't know all the details yet, but it's up to $4 million. Wow. Mm -hmm. So presumably those are tied up in incentives. I don't know exactly what they could be. But I'll say this. If he plays, he's probably going to play the whole season because this is a guy who does not get hurt. That's one of the things you can say about him. He does not miss time. He has played, mm. I think, every game for the last five years that he could have played, which is, um, you don't see that very often in the modern NFL, it feels like. You don't see offensive linemen just pile up 5,500 snaps over the course of five years without ever missing any time. Indeed. Um, it is unusual, and that's a, I, I, certainly it's with how many injuries we just dealt with last year on the offensive line alone, Brendan. I mean, all five of our guys got knocked out at one point. Um, so you having a guy with a little bit more of that longevity in there or not longevity, but you know, ability to be out there every week is a, a nice thing to be able to bring into board. I like him as a player here. There's two things that I want to bring up to you and ask you about on this. Um, first off, I don't know. I, I was trying to look a little bit deeper into this about what happened with him going to the jets. Um, you know, like hack, I think Hackett uh, just got there uh, last year's. And so he's had two different offensive coordinator or, you know, in his time there, mm -hmm. but there certainly was a distinct drop off in Lincoln's performance from when he went from San Francisco to the jets. Mm -hmm. What did, did you have anything in your research on this that, that pointed to you as to the reasoning behind this? I haven't had a chance to really look at the tape necessarily, but it's a stark difference in how he was graded. Oh yeah, definitely. And there's a couple different factors here. The first is obviously he's getting older. He is. Mm. And I do think there is some legitimate stuff here where we're not getting an elite guard at this point. We're not getting a pro bowler. He made the pro bowl in 2021. He's, you know, he's not that anymore. That's for sure. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. And in an ideal world, he does not enter the 2024 season as the starter because he's not, maybe he could be a starter in this league, but he's not really a good starter, right? Like there's a clear, we have to understand the difference there. Like there may not be that much separating Lakin Tomlinson from Phil Haynes at this point. That's very possible. The, well, except he stays healthy and Phil Haynes doesn't. Phil Haynes never stays healthy. But um, also at the same time, we have to acknowledge that he went from a team that has as good of an offensive support system as you can have. You've got Kyle Shanahan. You've got that scheme. You've got Trent Williams right to your left side. You've got great running backs and receivers and tight ends that you're playing with. And when he went to New York, he went to a team that has no support system for you as an offensive lineman. You've got a couple of, um, can we call AVT a bust at this point? Can we call Mekhi Becton a bust at this point? I feel like you can. Becton, Becton's in that place for sure. Um, at least the other guy's giving you some flashes a little bit, but he certainly has been beaten all to hell along with it. So, you know, I think, yeah, you absolutely mm -hmm. can start to say that's legitimate with Becton. He can't get yeah. on the football field. And when he does, he doesn't play well. Uh -huh. And you got no quarterback. You got nothing really going on except, I guess you could say, Garrett Wilson. He's been nice. Garrett's, yeah, Garrett's been a good player for them. But you're right about the dysfunction of the organization there. And if you have bad mm -hmm. quarterback play, it can make offensive lines look really bad. Can it? I mean, that's yeah, that's, it definitely goes in tandem. 
Yeah, so there is definitely a little bit of that going on here. But at the end of the day, I do think it's very fair to look at this situation and conclude that he's not really a guy you want starting for your organization. And we would definitely be well served to look at him as a backup um, as we go forward into this draft. So if the signing is just for that, then it's great because he was the best guy that we still had available to us. He was the best left guard that we could get. Again, by the way, he's played 99% of his career snaps at left guard. So that's exactly what he is. He is not a right guard at all. He's not a center at all. He plays left guard. Yes. But if this is something that John Schneider is doing so he can avoid drafting a guard until like the fourth <laughs> round or fifth round, yes, then it's not so great. And it's great that we're not pigeonholed into taking a guard in the first round maybe anymore. But But... I don't want this to change our position going into the draft. I don't want this to change the way that we're thinking. Um, I, I still want to make sure I come away with one of those top guys, somebody who has upside over Lake and Tomlinson. Tomlinson has no upside. He's got nothing mm. but downside. He's 32 years old. You yeah. don't have upside at 32 years old. So I just hope the approach that this team takes going forward with Tomlinson is the right one. It's okay to have him around. He's clearly good enough to be on an NFL team. But you don't really want him as your starter unless the Jets, the stench of the Jets organization just completely ate him up over the last two years, which I guess is possible, but I certainly wouldn't count on it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is possible. There's, there's another part component to this that sort of I don't understand quite, Brennan. This, this is the part where I need you to maybe explain to me on this one because I just I don't also get this a little bit. I, I can't argue with the fact he's the highest quality guard in the market, that it's lean. Um, he gives you some insurance now. That's good to have. I worry a little bit like you say about this is that does this now hold you back from going a little bit higher on a guard to bring in here, especially with John Schneider's recent comments about guards not maybe being overvalued in his outlook of things, both in when they're be where they're being drafted and how much money's being spent on them. So I, this is a concern for me too. But the thing I want to notate on this, Brendan, is go look at really quickly, if you get a chance, uh, Lake and Tomlinson's combine scores. And... This is a guy that runs a 5-3-3 40-yard dash, a 1-8-9, almost a 1-9-0, um, you know, a 10-yard split. He's got that we were we were knocking it the other day talking about the lineman with the five flat 20-yard shuttle. He's got a 4-8-7 shuttle. He's got an 8-1-7-3 cone. So, you know, if you go look at Damian Lewis's combine scores, he beats this. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we're going to this spread-based concept that's supposed to be really leaning into mobile-based linemen, yet you're doing some more of bringing back a mobile-based lineman into the scheme. I, I need a little bit of understanding from your perspective is just that he's, he's okay, he's good, and that that's the, the bottom line. Is, well, he's just a good guard, so it's that, that overrides all. Because I don't understand how it's been a problem last couple of years where we haven't fit in offensive linemen that fit to the scheme and then holds the offense back. And it would seem that I'm not majorly worried about this, but I'm just kind of not understanding how this would seem to be a little bit more of the same. No, no, I agree with all that. And remember, he's old as well. So even if he was athletic once upon a time, he's probably not now. As it turns yeah. out, he never was. But even if he was somebody who had really good combine scores 10 years ago, that's probably not reflective of what he would be doing now. So I agree with all that. I think it's just a matter of they needed somebody. They needed somebody who could technically play the position who wasn't, how should I put this, uh, who wasn't like Phil Haynes level wasn't, yeah. um, you know, wasn't completely replacement level, even though I don't think there's a ton that separates Lake and Tomlinson from replacement level anymore. But I can understand they're looking at him as a veteran option that has a lot of experience. I get that. But I don't think the athletic profile part was a big consideration when you brought him in. I think they were just like, well, this is the best we can do now. Let's make sure we do it. We don't want to go into the draft with literally zero left guards on the roster. Mm -hmm. So they just do what is in their mind the best they can do with the money that they have, which in I, I do think at this point it probably was. But now I need to see the team treat this signing the way it should be treated, not as, well, we don't have to worry about left guard anymore. It's okay. Now we have our backup left guard. We need to do everything we can to find a starting left guard now. Yeah.
No, I, I'm okay with it. Not have a problem with the move overall. It's not big money. It's a one-year deal, and having some help at the offensive line is a good thing to have. It's just I would like to see if they are going to address linemen in this draft is finding some more of those guys that do fit to the scheme so you can run the scheme in full. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely prefer that. Well, uh, that was about the only bit of news going. So Lakin comes in, gives them a little solidity. Whether or not they're counting for the draft here, Brendan, they at the very least have helped themselves out not to have to reach for need with guard in the draft by making the signing. I think this thoroughly now, when you look across the board, be it linebacker, be it safety, be it the interior of the offensive line, be it the backup tackle. John Schneider's done a good job here with these signings at the very least of making sure he's not putting himself in a pickle in the draft, of forcing himself into a corner to have to pick to positions, which is – what I think is a little bit of a problem that gets you into that place of failing at drafts because you're picking for need. Right. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's turn it over our attention here to the main uh, thrust of this show today, which is we are going to be looking at the edges for this draft class. And I think that from Seattle Seahawks fans perspectives here, Brendan at first, um, you know, blush on this, they would say, well, there's not a need for an edge. We've drafted two second round edges in the past couple of years. We've spent a, a gob smack amount of money on Uchenna Nwosu. We still brought back Daryl Taylor. We're taken care of here. We don't need this. Uh, is this a uh, correct outlook from a Seahawks fan perspective, or is there actually an open door here to this edge being a possibility in this draft for the Hawks? Um, I don't think edge is a position you should ever really say that about. I think that the best teams in the NFL Typically, you quite often see they're the teams that stack edge talent on top of each other going up as high as they can. Like the best teams, I think, do overload at that position and just say, we'll figure it out later. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, fundamentally, you should never feel like, oh, we're just good at edge. You know, I'm thinking about that Giants team that won two Super Bowls. They just kept adding pass rushers over and over and over and over yeah. again. They were never like we have enough. Strahan, mm -hmm. Uminora, and then they add Tuck, then they add Matthias Kiwanuka. They added, I think his name was Jay Alford. They just kept going, mm -hmm. and it worked great. That was not a team that had any business winning any Super Bowls in that era, but they won two because they attacked that position so well. They really did. I, and I think it's the thing that uh, I will, would truly believe would be a smart thing for us to try to you know stay in that lane and try to take advantage of with it. Um, the other thing it gives you ability to, Brendan, too, is when you get in, out of your ahead of this, if you draft a good one, is that you know you come to a decision on your Shannon next year, and if he's not holding the gate, you save the money, and you've got the backup guy you can kind of go to. I think as well, when you look at the guys that we have on the roster, while there is some good talent, there's no doubt about that, and they've spent high picks on them. You have Boye Mafia that you can trust. You have a Shannon coming back from a major injury. Derek Hall kind of gave you a lackluster season last year, and Daryl Taylor just – has a lot of holes in his game to expect that he's going to be able to hold the water for you. So I think on top of that too, there's definitely an opening here for them and an opening, Brendan, I think you'd agree with me on this, that can be struck at any time in this draft. Edge might be oh. up at the top, edge might be a little bit deeper down, but it's possible anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think this team should take a um, narrow approach here. I think this team should keep an open mind when it comes to almost any position. And there are some positions where there is a diminishing return, right? Like mm. if your team has eight really good wide receivers, that's really not doing that much for you, right? Like how are you going to get all those guys on the field? You're not. It's just yeah. not going to happen. But if your team has an overabundance of edge rushers, there's going to be a way to get those guys on the field enough to make a significant impact for you. So I don't even think about it like that. And who knows? I, I don't think Taylor makes this team. I don't think we can afford it, first of all. Like I've yeah. crunched the numbers especially after this Tomlinson signing, it's like there's a, a clear budget issue with the Seahawks getting under the cap in time. And one way they can get around it is to just send Daryl Taylor packing before the season starts. And I expect them to do that, honestly. Yeah. Boy, it'd be so nice if you could even just find a, a flip of a fifth round pick for him, wouldn't it? Even just, yeah, get a little, just a, a little just back end value off him. If you could try to you know, get a team pulled into it, but I agree with you. I think he's got an uphill battle to making the team and, um, I especially think once Mike McDonald gets him on the football field, I don't think he's going to be ter terribly encouraged by what he's seeing as far as the results go. Well, let's um, let's start diving this tra this class, Brandon. We've got a, a good number of guys out of this edge group. It's a it's a pretty strong edge group overall. Um, strong mm -hmm. at the top, th th thick throughout. Um, and let's start with the guy that I I have as my number one guy. Be interested to see if you're also in the same place with this, because um, there's a lot of people I think you could have three, four different answers from certain people when you ask them what their top edges in this class. It's not necessarily a consensus like last year with Will Anderson. Um, but Dallas Turner is the guy we will start out with here. The kid out of Alabama, 
who is uh, a, a player I like quite a bit. He's my top edge, a little bit over the top of verse. Mm-hmm. I think he's just a, a little bit more fully complete as a player. What is your uh, your thoughts on Dallas Turner? He is my number one edge in this class, too. I think he solidified that at the Combine when he tested historically good. Mm. Just to give you an idea here, his 40 time is 98th percentile for edge players. His 10-yard split, which is more important than the 40-yard dash, 97th percentile. Vert was 97th percentile. Broad was 92nd percentile. So as an athlete, this is historic. Like he's a better athlete than Will Anderson. He's not a better player, but mm-hmm. he's more explosive of an athlete. Definitely, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I know he only has the one year of big production, but that's what happens when you get stuck behind Will Anderson. Like at the end of the day, not that he was bad in 2022, by the way. I, I want to say that he was just behind Will Anderson. So he's got tremendous edge speed, tremendous speed to the edge to get around tackles wins with his speed so much he understands leverage really well he's also somebody who can handle coverage duty so if you play him in that three four outside linebacker role and you have him drop back into coverage on some reps he's going to be able to do that his bend is phenomenal and what do we talk about sometimes because i love talking about edge rushers it's probably my favorite position to evaluate in the draft every year the the the, uh edge um it's all about your first step quickness and then your bend if you have those two things you're probably going to be good. And Mm -hmm. he has both those things. He played all over the place on that Alabama front. They used him as a five tech, a three tech. uh, 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 They put him on the outside. They put him hand in the dirt, uh, four point stance, three point stance, all kinds of different stuff he did. And he's a high effort guy. I don't question his effort at all. Like last year, people were looking at Will Anderson that last year and they were like, I don't know about this guy's effort, but Turner, I feel like gives better effort than Anderson did. Now, Anderson, was doing it to protect himself because he was already such a highly touted prospect. But um, I think that the fact that he's only 21 is also a huge selling point Mm. because as of right now, he doesn't really have pass rush moves, right? He doesn't really have moves. He has speed and he's able to use that speed really well, but he doesn't have a well-developed set of genuine pass rush moves, but he's young. He's going to develop that. He's not really good at, defending against the run he doesn't have the strength to hold up he doesn't set the edge well that's going to come too i think Mm. because he's so young i absolutely think he can add a little bit of strength a little bit of weight he's got long arms should be able to help him shed blockers so to me he's right hanging around that top 10 in this draft for me and he is my number one edge yes yeah, I think uh, Atlanta says especially looks to me like a spot that would be a, a real place. I think they would jump on with him there. Um, 22 and a half sacks over the last three years. Every year he got better as a player. Speaking to you, what you just talked about, that at 21, will he get better? Well, he's shown a track record of w- walking in the doors of five-star prospect who improved readily throughout his time there at Alabama in the three years. So that does to me, is should be a thing that instructs you to where you, you feel confident that that's going to carry through as a pro as well with it. I actually liked him a little bit. I, I will admit that there's some things there with him in setting the edges and great. I did like a lot of the snaps though there with him in the edge because he does flash those snaps too where he can set the edge, where he can, mm-hmm. you know, root down against those tackles. He's, he's, he's a little like Anderson where they look thin, but they actually really are just, there's not a lot of fat on them and they actually carry a little bit of a stronger frame than their size would indicate to me. You know, there's a little more size, stronger power, explosive explosion to power, whatever you want to call it. I think he's got that. You're right about the arm moves. I think he's got a long arm bull rush he can use, but there's no real hand fighting he's doing beyond that. He Mm -hmm. does have really lightning fast hands, which I think are going to help him in that development of those pass rush moves. I also feel like he's a guy that the closer he gets to the ball carrier or the quarterback, the faster he will suddenly get. You know, you just, you feel like there's an extra gear when he feels like he's close to to getting there. Because again, we've talked about guys that have that, they can get to the quarterback, but they can't finish the deal. You know, Mm -hmm. they can get all the way to it, but they can't quite get it done. And this is a guy that will get it done when he gets close to the QB and gets his opportunity. So Mm -hmm. top 10 player as well. And um, he's definitely my, my number one edge in this draft. Yeah. And if he is somehow there at 16, and I don't think that he's going to be after that combine, I think he solidified it. Mm -hmm. If he is there at 16, I'm all over it. I'm not, I'm not passing that up. I got no problem with it. I, it's hard not to say that the value of that is that is the if we're going by let's have our team run by value, Brendan, and you've got the top edge in the draft sitting at 16, 
just on that surface face of that alone, I think you would just go, okay, that's you operating out of value. And I would agree with you. I would do the same thing. That's good value to take that player at that point if he is available. Mm -hmm. Not likely, but maybe. All right, on to the next one. And this is a guy that has, again, another one of those. Some people have this guy as their number one. Some people have, um, you know, uh, Dallas is their number one. This is this is my number two. Um, still a very complete skill set he's bringing to play here, Brendan and Jared Verse, a guy we've been looking at for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Love what he does bring to the play. Just just a little titch below for me with Dallas Turner. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. He is my number two. And I'll say this, I feel like he's going to be better in 4-3. I think he'll be better with his hand in the dirt, so I don't know if I want him that much. Mm. But it would be also hard to pass up. It would be hard to pass up on him because I think he'll be really good. Yeah. Um, Really good testing numbers. He's fast, he's quick, good explosiveness. Uh, Doesn't really have the change of direction stuff, which is why I wonder about him a little bit in coverage, but it's certainly not the end of the world. Even three, four outside linebackers, they don't drop into coverage that much. Mm. Um. Kind of weird that his production actually backslid in 2023. He went back to school. He could have declared and been a first-round pick in 2022. He didn't. Went back probably planning on becoming a top-five pick, and it, it did not happen. So that's mm -hmm. a little bit suspicious, I will admit. That's a little bit like, wait, why didn't he get better? He's, he's 23 years old. He was 22 last year. That's kind of weird. But he's got a very quick first step. Unlike Dallas Turner, he comes into the league with a good set of pass rush moves that he can utilize, I think. I think he's mm. got legitimate moves ready to go, uses his hands really well. He can hold up against the run. He's a pretty good edge holder, strength. He's got bend, high effort player. So definitely a lot of positives you can take away from Jared versus game. I do think his block shedding is still a little bit of a work in progress, although I'm confident it'll get better. He's got longish arms or decently long arms. Um, I think he can be a little over aggressive on occasion, leaves his run lane open because he got too far upfield. And again, the production part is a little bit suspicious. So I think he's probably right around mid first round, right where our pick is. I just kind of like him better in a four, three personally. That's how I feel about verse. Well, that's a fair enough outlook on him. Um, I think he could probably play in both, but four, three might be his best landing spot. Um, I, I do think that the, the red, he is a pass rusher right now where there are some issues with the, not bad issues with the runs, but he can get pushed around a little bit in the run. I think he's one of the best edge hand fighters in this draft. I think, um, Latou's better, but I think this guy's right behind Latou as far as his hand fighting. He's got the signature move with the Bosa brothers, that inside scissors, outside scissors with the Euro step, you know, that hand swipe Euro step move that they'll do. He's really, really good with it. So you're right. He's about having some advanced stuff in his hand usage that a guy like Turner absolutely did not. Um, I love how he rounded the arc. Another guy that I think can, can dip and can bend a little bit. He really flattens his route to the quarterback once he gets around that arc, um, which is just helps him to convert those pressures to sacks and, and get home with it. Um, he really improved his tackling this year. That was an issue with him going last year. I know you're right about the improvement that didn't come with the pass rusher and the productivity there. That's and even how he defended the run necessarily wasn't great as far as setting edge that there was a major improvement there. But I did think that he did do a better job of tackling where you could see with him previous years, he was just one of those guys that just the tackling numbers were just uh, atrocious with him. So he came a little bit, he came a little bit further with that. I think he's got a little bit of tight hips, not quite that pure explosiveness at one six on the 10 yard split that you would have liked to, you know, you like getting him down to one five, five ish. It's not bad, but it's also not elite Brendan. Um, and I do have him with a comp of, I've got him with Brian Burns and Dallas Turner with Josh Allen. You, uh, you buying those comps? Okay. I, I, let me think about that for a second here. Jared versus Brian Burns. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can dig that. Brian Burns was a mid-first round pick as well, I think. He might have actually snuck into the top 10. Josh Allen. Okay. I think Brian Burns, no, he did top, he was the 20, wasn't he? Was Brian Burns top 10? Hmm, I thought he was I can't top, remember. Yeah, I think I he's think a, he, You might be right. I can't remember for sure. That was back before I did a comprehensive... Uh, Drafty Val every with pretty much every single player, so I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I the only re reason I remember is I think we had a chance to take him, mm. and that's why it's standing out in my mind is that we had an opportunity and we didn't. 16 is where okay. he went. Okay. In his. All right. So. so okay, not a bad one. Yeah. So easy. I think it's all player. I'm with you in this. I'd be much more likely to want to jump on Dallas Turner than this one, though. This would be a little bit more of a. Uh, if I was yeah. getting 24, 25 and I'd move back and he was there, then I'm feeling good with that 16. Yeah, this is to me like right on the fence. This is like the 
point in the draft where I'm like, okay, I think I'm trading down now if he's the best guy left. But yeah. I, I'm not sure, right? He's right on that line for me. He is. He's a really solid player, but it's just there is a couple things with it with them take, taking him in the first round you wouldn't necessarily love. And as you said, didn't take that step forward. We're talking about Dallas Turner every single year improving as he's gone along. When you hit a roadblock, what's the reason for the roadblock, especially if major injury can't be the explanation? If you were healthy and good, then what happened? You know, did you get double teamed more? Is it, you know, is it that? You know, and I didn't see as much of that off of his tape that he was just suddenly getting like all these extra chips and doubles over there where he hadn't the year before. Hmm. All right, well, keeping him, keeping him moving. Um, this guy isn't as much of a popular guy, Brendan, as a top top edge guy. Um, but he's a guy that I have heard some people like and prefer more than even those other two guys. I, he didn't necessarily. I think there's less of these kind of people out there versus the other two. But there's a there's a section, Brendan. Um, and this is an interesting prospect in this draft for me. I'm gonna have a key question for you after you do a breakdown on this guy. But give me the uh, give me your sort of uh, broad strokes here on La Leatu Latu. I mean, the production is pretty unimpeachable. You won't find better production than this. And, you know, he's he's playing, he's not playing at Troy. He's not playing at Pepperdine. He's playing at UCLA. It's a real school. Um, he, so the production is really unimpeachable with him. 96.3 PFF grade last year, which is, I think, the highest I've ever seen. I, highest graded edge in by all of college football last year. He might be the highest graded player I've ever seen from PFF. I don't know if mm. I've seen higher than 96.3. Um, ridiculous. Really good use of his hands. Knows how to use his hands really well. Good variety of moves. He has legitimate pass rush moves. It's not just all speed or all strength. He actually wins on the basis of his ability to um, make uh, just beat guys as a technician. He always gives maximum effort. He's got some bend as well, and he understands leverage. He's six five, but he does do a pretty good job getting to be the low man. And um, th those are certainly positive traits. Those are appealing traits. But I don't know. I, I couldn't really get into this one the way that some people are because um, on, I want to say, the uh, PFF Mock Draft Simulator, Latu was recently ranked as the most popular pick for the Seahawks to make at 16 by fans. Hmm. Like, people were really into this. Um, the injury concerns bug me because it's a neck, I think. He missed two seasons in a row. Because this guy was a Husky, and then he transferred to UCLA after they had their really bad season with uh, Jimmy Lake. And he missed two straight seasons that um, related to a neck injury. And, you know, those neck injuries, one day you wake up and your career is over. It's, it happens very quickly. Mm -hmm. And that is very concerning. His arms are not that long. Hard for him to shed blockers because he just doesn't have the arm length to do it. He's not that strong either. And I feel like he gets pushed around in the run game a little bit. And he doesn't really have first step quickness. He has bend, but he's missing that first step quickness to me. So I think that he's clearly going to be good in the NFL, but he doesn't have those tools that make him a blue chipper to me. And I also kind of feel like he'd be better in a 4-3 because he is a little bit bigger and he doesn't have those freak attributes that I look for that are more 3-4 edge type things. So. I think he's a first rounder, but I can't really go much higher than that. I think he should be a low first rounder personally. Yeah, I um I, I do think he should be a first rounder and probably in the 20s. I think he is the most um skilled pass rusher in this draft. And I, his hand usage and his ability to have a variety of different moves and spin moves and chops and um he he can go to the rip. Um he can he can set tackles up Brendan he's a guy that you know he can over a course of a three or four play set a guy up for a move that he wants to set in there and get um so he's got a plan of attack and how he goes about his business that I think is different from some of the edge rushers in this draft and why he was so highly rated um he's he's more slippery than a handful of salmon dipped in grease I mean the guy just you can't get your hands on him as a pass rusher and it stands out over and over again where he just is constantly sliding off these blocks at times because the pressures he cr he creates the sacks he creates are fast pressures are fast sacks. These are not, you know, well, I've, I'm, I'm just fighting away and I've got to pressure, you know, the coverage sack and I'm able to clean it up. It's him whooping his guy off the edge and going and getting that sack. And so I, I certainly think that the, the first round deal is a, is the right way to put it in kind of the back half of the first round, because there is some physical stuff there. That's maybe a little bit missing. I thought he got the job done with the run game. It's not a strength of his, 
but he got it done at least. It, was, it wasn't something that was a big major negative attribute. I think with all three of these edges that we're talking about at the top, they all have a little bit of an average ability at defending the run a little bit across the board as it stands. Yeah, I think Ferris um, is the best of the three. Would you agree with that? Uh, maybe on that. I might give Turner, I might be giving Turner a little bit of an edge though. I like a little more than you did on the, on the edge set stuff. Um, he's got counters. He can chain pass rush moves together. I mean, this is a professional pass rusher, the likes of which you don't normally get in the NFL where he's walking in the door. And I think that that's going to allow him to be productive very quickly. Brendan, the question I would pose to you is I'm gonna bring two names to you and you got to tell me which one he's more of. And before you, you might toss this away, by the way, on the second name I'm going to give you, let's think about it because the second name I give you is a guy that didn't go in the top 15. He was a top 30 guy, okay? Is he more Jalen Phillips or is he more TJ Watt? I'm not feeling the TJ Watt thing, although TJ Watt was not exactly beloved in the draft that year. I remember he was a late first rounder, okay? That's what I'm saying. But, like he came out, he wasn't looked at Wisconsin that way. You know, he was he was not looked as that true blue guy. Hmm. Jalen, I don't, I don't, God, I don't remember Jalen Phillips that well. I he was a guy who kind of slipped through my notice. It was a Miami edge guy. He's been okay. He went to he went from the Hurricanes to the Dolphins. So in he's had a, he's done okay in his career so far you know he's, he's been fine you know he's not been bad but he's been kind of fine but um another guy that was really heavy on hand usage and just working his hands and that was his big claim to fame kind of coming out i, I think he's probably more jalen than tj and tj mm -hmm. i think had a little bit more explosiveness just a slight more explosiveness than latu has yeah but to me there is some comparables here between latu and and um and Watt, including the fact Watt went in the back of the third in the back of the first round. It wasn't clear yeah. to people this guy's going to be a future defensive player of the year, you know, multiple time defensive player of the year. Yeah, TJ, yeah, TJ, I mean, his thing is also he's excellent in coverage. I don't know if I see that with Law too. No, no. I would say just as the pass rusher on the comp with that. The usage okay. of the hands, the having a, a variety of moves they can call upon in their bag, um, setting pass rushers up, chaining moves together. That's the thing where I see with him. There's some comps to me to, with TJ. I just don't. I think TJ's got that little extra explosiveness that allows him to, to also then really challenge you from an athletic standpoint where Latu can't. Yeah, but I, I do think he's going to be able to at least walk in the door, Brendan, and give you pass rush from day one and be pretty competent in that. Can you rely on him three downs and all that? Maybe not, but he will give at least to you that. Right, for, and I don't know if the first two guys we talked about necessarily are going to be just ready to roll day one as much. So I think the floor is there and. He's going to hit it to it quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe he just doesn't have the ceiling of the other guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's kind of how I feel, too. So, if the Seahawks ended up with Latu, unless it's like after a significant trade back, that's not something I would be super enthused about, admittedly. That's, uh, I, I know a lot of Seahawks fans like him a lot, and I get it. I mean, you can't match that production. That production's off the charts, but mm. I don't, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not really feeling that one the way that some people are. I'm not either. I, I like him as a player. I just don't know if the fit is as good here. And um, I, I, we'd have to trade it back to pick him up at that point. At least we're having the second round pick. That'll make me feel a little bit better about it. But I don't think this would be a, a way I'd, it just not, just doesn't feel like a fit. Does it for, for the Hawks mm -hmm. and what they're doing necessarily. He's going to be a good player, but just not here with mm -hmm. it. All right. Well, let's move on to the next guy that I do believe is going to go in the first round and a guy that another guy, again, this is a fourth guy that some people would tell you is their favorite edge of this draft, that this guy's got the, the most upside to him, which I think I might agree with that. There's the most potential upside in this guy, Brennan, but I would also say the bus factor here is also very large in, in succession with that. What do you think about Damian chop Robinson? Uh, he is a really, really interesting mix of traits here. Really interesting stuff going on with Chop. And um, I've come around on him pretty positively. I like him. I'm intrigued. Um, we need to be a little bit careful here because there are some things. But this could be, I mean, Penn State produces yet another player that doesn't really produce in college but has incredible physical abilities. Like, we've seen this before. Mm. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But... Uh, He's got good size, 6'3", 254. Uh, the, the, um, the testing was off the charts. It's basically Dallas Turner level, except he had a lower vertical. Mm -hmm. And his 20-yard shuttle was awesome, too. So his change of direction's on point. So I think he'd be a great fit for a 3-4 because he can do some of the coverage stuff. He's got the short area quickness, they call it. Um, 
his arms are pretty short, 32 and a half inches. That's, that's a little bit tough. That's unfortunate. That's uh, something that he cannot do anything about. His arms will never be longer than they are now. No. Also, not very impressive would be the production, right? Like at Penn State, he has nine and a half sacks over the last two years, 41 tackles. PFF grades are incredible, though, by the way. They love him. They put him up in the uh, 90s both years, the last two. I saw that. Yeah, so he's doing something right. I love his burst off the edge. I love his speed. Uh, he's shown the ability to drop into coverage at Penn State, so it is something that he's actually put on tape. Um, his motor never stops running. High effort. I don't think he lacks production for laziness. He's got strength for an edge player as well. He's stronger than most of these edge guys. And he's got the bend. He's got that first step quickness and bend combo to crush you around the edge. Now, the short arms are a problem, and they do affect him. He's not a very good tackler, and he doesn't shed blocks well. Both those things are because he's got the short arms, partially at least. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of pass rush moves yet. <clears throat> Needs to add some legitimate moves, and... He will. He's only 21. I'm, I'm confident he's going to add these things. Mm -hmm. So I I acknowledge it's a gamble, but this is the kind of gamble I would be okay taking. Now, if you do it at 16, I'm like, uh, but if you trade back a little bit to the 20s and you get him, okay. I'm I'm pretty on board with that at this point. Yeah, I... He's a guy that definitely I struggle with, Brendan, because he's a complicated player, I think. You know, the highs are highs, and there's really some worrisome lows. Um, he lost 150 snaps over this year and half the pressures with it. And that's, again, where, why is that explained like these other players? Why did you have the dip? Um, and I, I think that, that when you talk about a guy getting his snaps reduced, Brendan, where it, the more it gets to a sample size level of time with PFF, the better it seems to work in the player's favor most of the time. Um, the games I watched, he would go quiet for very large swaths of the game. He just wouldn't do anything. He just disappeared, basically. Heavily rotated through on top of having big swaths of the game where he does disappear. He is hyper-athletic. He moves better laterally than most any edge that you will find out there. He is pure explosion off the snap, no doubt about that. And as I said, the upside is there with him. I think, though, that I tend to find myself more in alignment of saying, though I can acknowledge the upside, if I was to be a betting man as to whether he's hitting upside or whether he's going to just be kind of raw goods that never kind of gets fully round out and has got to lean just kind of purely on how quick and fast he can try to be around the edge, which will work at times. Uh, I, I just think that limits a bit of his upside there. And, and I go in the first round for a guy like this, man, I, I don't like taking the first round risk on a guys that have that hasn't really produced, but we can see the upside there, but we're not sure if he's really going to reach it with a lot of confidence. I think you want more confidence that he's going to reach that. You know, I mean, what, what would you put his chances of hitting that upside based on what you saw with him? 50, said 50, maybe 55%. I'm a little bit higher than that because I think he's got a high motor and I think he's only 21. So he's going to improve in some of these areas. I, I, I think it's higher than that. There is definite bust potential here and it is concerning, but I like this more than Latu personally. To me, chop, could become like a superstar in this league. I don't know if Latu can ever be a superstar because of his physical limitations personally. I think that's a fair way of looking at it. I do. And he sets the edge in the run game as strong as any of these guys that we've talked about so far. So it's a notable part to consider with him is that he is really good against the run. And and that's and it's not just sort of getting by. Like some of these other guys we've talked about at the top here, they're kind of just getting by. You know, they're playing at kind of an average level at college. It'll be at about an average to a slightly below average level, maybe at the pros. Um, it, Dallas might get better in time and, and whatnot, but let's see, it's going to be what it is. And I think with verse, it's kind of going to be what it is with that. So, um, I agree with you. There's upper level star potential there. No doubt about it. I think that just the, the bus factors there, you're rolling the dice big time with this kind of pick and you better be sure in your assessment. You know, you better be very, very, very sure in your assessment. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I mean, he's the kind of guy that can get people fired, right? I, I yeah. would say that he is the kind of guy that gets people fired, but I'm, I'm intrigued. And I can't take him at 16. It's got to come into the 20s if you're grabbing him. You can't be going 16 with this kid. Yeah, not, I'm not going 16. Yeah. 25, 25, 26. Okay. I, I can get it there. I'm, I'm much happier there to do that at that point with his potential than, than lower. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's keep it moving here from one Robinson to another Robinson. And this is one of my pound the table guys in this draft, Brendan. This is one mm -hmm. of my, I'm pounding the table for this guy. Um, love, love. Loved his tape. 
Uh, he is a unique edge in this class. He is, in my opinion, the best power edge that we have in this draft. What are your thoughts on Damian Darius Robinson out of Missouri? Well, I, I like him a lot. I do. I wonder how this is going to work, though, because he is much bigger than these other guys we're talking about. He's a 285, 285 pounds. So is he a five tech? Does he slide inside? Like what, what, what are we, uh, what exactly are we dealing with here as a player? Because the player, I'm super into it, right? 34 and a half inch arms. Uh, testing numbers are good if compared to interior defensive linemen. They're certainly not good compared to edge players. Mm -hmm. Um, He's an excellent run defender. He's very physical the way he plays the run. He's got really strong hands. He can just move blockers with his hands, get them out of the way, go make a play on the ball. Excellent stack and shed game. He has the best stack and shed. He has a better stack and shed game than any edge that we've talked about so far in this draft. The way he mm. sheds blockers is pretty remarkable. He's quick enough and he's got enough burst to chase down plays to the other side of the field. Like, you know, when they run to the opposite side, he can chase down and he's a powerful player. I just don't know if he's quick enough to play on the edge in a three, four defense. I don't know if he can be that outside linebacker. He's got a somewhat limited set of pass rush moves. Short area agility is just not really there. And as of right now, he's mostly just a bull rusher. He doesn't have a lot of moves in my estimation. He's mostly just a bull rusher. But if you can find the role for him, I do like him a lot. I put an early second round grade on him as an interior defender. As an edge player, you're going to have to kind of convince me that this can actually work. Well, I don't think that if you were to take the if you were to take last year's version of Jadavian Clowney ten years removed from the draft and have him run his testing numbers out, I think that they would probably be very similar to what Darius Robinson posted. Um, and if if Jadavian Clowney can go out and have the best year of his career as that power edge in this defense, um, why cannot Robinson then fit in in the same way? And I, I the, the strong hard edges is the big part of what McDonald wants to set at the forefront of his defense. I think that there's almost no doubt in my mind that they're going to seek to find one in this draft. Is it Darius or is it Marshawn Nealon later on? You know, we'll see with that part of it. But he has a unique ability to control physically the tackles, and that's the part to me that really comps to a guy. I don't think he's clowny, but that, that comps to clowny in a similar way where he gets his hands on the tackle. That tackle's not controlling him. He's controlling that tackle. And with this guy, you see him constantly. It's not even a bull rush. He's just sort of flinging back and forth the lineman until he can kind of get him to a side where he can just throw him away and then get to the quarterback. But over and over on tape, you see him controlling the tackles. Not them controlling him, not him off balance, but him giving it to them. Um, he was named the practice player of the week at the Senior Bowl. I think he blew a lot of people away out there with his effort. He was unblockable at times in the one-on-one -on -one drills out there. He knows how to use his hands. I would give you that he's not a technician out there, but he knows how to use his hands with his power and strength to get mm. the job done. And I think it's a little bit less in this defense with the way that McDonald wants to set it up. With the forefront being hard edges, it then becomes a little bit to me less about having the guy that's the undersized edge out there that's getting the quarterback off that side and versus hard edges. You got to make a call to one or the other. And if I want the hard edge, if I want the strong edge, I'm probably not going to get as much first step explosion and quickness and dip and bend, but I'll, it's a sacrifice I'm okay to make if they can get to the, the quarterback by other ways. And like Jadavian, he doesn't rely on dip. He doesn't rely on bend. He's going to get there with power. He's going to get there just basically, you know, mauling the guy across from him. And then eventually we'll get to the quarterback. And this guy does the same type of stuff. I think early second round grade as well. My, my mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I thought about the Clowney thing. I thought about the Clowney comp. But isn't Clowney a good deal, like, quicker than this? Like, he's more athletic than this. So, I, I don't know if I can see it through that lens quite. Well, the Clowney that came out 10 years ago? Yeah, the Clowney that tripped on a sprinkler head in his rookie year and jacked his knee up and he wasn't able to bend. You know, he himself has said he can't bend the same since he suffered that injury. Um, yeah, I, I think that, it, as I was saying, I think if you took Jadavian Clowney right now and you ran him to the combine and you ran him through testing scores, I bet he'd be pretty damn close to 4.95173 10 yard split. I don't think he's rocking 163 10 yard split. Because uh, I don't think you frankly see that from Clowney on tape. How many times can you remember the last couple of years, even when he was in Seattle, blowing past a guy off the edge? Mm -hmm. You know, you you don't see that. And it's just not his game, but he can still be effective that way. You know, I'll give you most edges, you want them to win that way. But it doesn't mean it has to be the only way where there aren't other edges that can win that way, especially when it's a true fit to the, what the defense needs, where I think in particular in this defense, that hard edge is uh, is a very important thing for McDonald to make sure that, you know, he's taking that run game away from you. Yeah, I could see it with Neeland, right? I can see it with Neeland, who we will talk about in a few minutes here, I assume. Mm -hmm. 
because yeah. I'm sure we both uh, looked at him and are both yeah. interested because the Seahawks have met with him at the combine. But um, I can see it more with him. He's a good deal more athletic than Robinson, and he's also a little bit smaller. He's mm-hmm. like 20 pounds lighter. Yeah. So I, I mean, can see it a little more there. I think it's definitely a backup option. And admittedly, I can't, I watch a little bit of tape in Elon, but there's only so much tape available from the Western Kentucky or wherever he was operating out of. Um, versus Robinson, we can see so much more of the tape. And I do like Nealon as for what he brings, but uh, I think Robinson would bring more of it better if you were to take him. Uh, but mm-hmm. I, I understand if not too. There's going to be some good good yeah. games here at this time. Yeah, I, I certainly like him. I just wonder where he fits in here. And I mean, wherever he fits in, I think he's going to do really good because I like him. But I do wonder if he ends up playing like the four eye roll. He very well. And I think you can open up to kicking him inside at times too. So that's where I think he does give you some upside to where it doesn't just have to be on the outside that there's maybe some opening to try him out inside and see if he can work in there at times, uh, be it four eye or in a three tech kind of role. Cause he, he has that legitimate power and he'd be a, he would be quick inside if you put him in there. So, um, really like this player. He's a hard nosed player. He's a tough guy out there. He's kind of, he's kind of defense. He's the kind of guy just going to make your defense better in my opinion when he's on the football field. And boy, listening to some of those coaches talk about trying to block him out there on a weekly basis in college football, they did not like it. Mm-hmm. It was not a good time for them on trying to figure out how to deal with him. Right. Um, all right, let's move on to the uh, other edge out of Penn State. Another very talented kid out there. They've, they're have they kicking out two of them in this draft, Brendan, and a little bit lesser known guy, maybe not quite as athletic as Chop. Adisa Isaac, a six foot four, 247 pound edge. From Penn State would be the other guy we're looking at in this draft, who I've got a, a current uh, eh, late second round grade on him, mm-hmm. is what I would put there with him. But uh, another interesting player. Did you have a chance to take a look at Idisa? Yeah, I did. Um, my concern with him, because there are some good things. Um, I like his hand usage. I think that he can play standing up or with his hand in the dirt, which is nice. Uh, he's got good lateral quickness. He's got good burst. He can chase plays down from the backside. He's got some nice counter moves that he can use. He does come into this league with some pass rush moves to to bring to bear. But to my eye, a lot of his production was simulated pressure, right? Where you have those unblocked plays. Like he's got over the last two years, 11 and a half sacks. I feel like a lot of them came. He was completely unblocked because he was involved in a stunt or a twist and ended up nobody was covering him. So that kind of threw me a little bit. I think his anchor is a little bit weak. Uh, I feel like he struggles to diagnose run plays. He doesn't really diagnose them the way you would like. And he doesn't have elite twitch, which if he had elite twitch, he'd be a much higher pick than this. So I get that. But yeah, I wasn't really into Isaac that much. I was more like a fourth rounder on him. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, uh, I like the quickness, the bend, the dip, effort, fight, athletic. He brings, I think, some nice things to the table that you like on all edge, edge rushers right out the gate. I don't think he's a lead in any one area. But I think he checks a lot of boxes down the line in his play. Um, I think he plays the high effort. He flies around the football field. You you see him just giving everything he's got on every play, which I liked. He's a good stunter, but that's a little bit of the simulated pressures you just talked about that does definitely show up at times with him. Um, decent pass rush moves. I do see a little bit of the late second, though, with him because he's got the arm length, the size, and I, I think he can bring some things to the table to be a, um, a solid guy in this league off the edge. Don't see star potential with him, but I, I think that there's a solid floor where he's going to be able to at least give you a rotational guy in there with some some upside to start long term. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't see him win a lot when he actually had a blocker engage with him, and he can get better. He's only 22. Another Penn State guy might be another guy who ends up being a better pro than college player, but I, I don't know. I wasn't in love with it. Yeah, I I get it. There's definitely some ref- refining of the tools that needs to go down with this kid to, right. to get him to where he's going to go. But uh, I do just with that effort and what he does have as a skill set, I think it'll be enough to find some some floor in this league somewhere. Uh, well, let's keep it moving here. Uh, we're actually going to turn for me towards what's going to be now the third round. So for me, Brendan, we've gotten through all the first or second round guys. Did you have a second round graded guy left on your list? Um, let me see here. I actually had Chris Braswell in my second round. I Ooh. liked him more than I think most people do. Uh, good, Really good testing numbers. He showed his speed and his uh, quickness. He's got power as well. Like he, I, I think he's really well balanced. He's got power and speed. He gives mm-hmm. effort at all times. He's got a very quick first step, really hard to stay in front of him. And he's also got a bull rush. He can push tackles deep into the pocket with his bull rush. 
and he's actually got some legitimate pass rush moves. I think he's got some legitimate ability to actually win as a technician. He holds up against the run, and they dropped him back into zone coverage sometimes, and he was fine. So if you have him as your 3-4 outside backer, I think you're going to do really well with that. Um, now, he doesn't have top-level bend, admittedly. He doesn't have the great pass rush bend that you would prefer, which, I mean, I don't want to downplay the importance of that at all because that's bend is such a big part of whether or not you can get to the quarterback. Lateral movement skills aren't that great. He's not going to be a good enough mover to play man coverage. Not that that's a big deal. I'm not going to make a big deal about that. Um, arm length is okay, not great. And he only has one year of production. But again, when you're on Alabama, you're going to get stuck behind some really good guys until your last year most of the time. He was stuck behind a really good year his whole career. His, a really mm -hmm. good guy his whole career. So the combination of speed, strength, effort, uh, pass rush moves, I feel like he's a second rounder. Yeah, I've got him in the third, so I'm not too far away from where you're at in your outlook of him. I think he's one of the the stronger edges that we have in this class that's not a power, power edge guy that's 285, right? A guy that's at that 250 edge weight, but then is actually really, really strong, um, which I think he is. Um, he's really good about dipping off of engagement where you know they lock up hands and then he just sort of dips under you. He doesn't have the bend like you say, but just a little bit of that dip which can, can help out a little bit. I think he's a really, really good edge at setting the run. One of the better ones in this class at being able to just power back tackles with ease at his size and control things in the run game, be it set that edge or get off the block, go make the tackle if the ball carrier is coming near in your zone. I think your point about the lateral um, stuff is also really a key point with me on him why I dropped him in the third round is I don't think just that the, la the lateral movement is um, below average. I think it's, it's a little labored. It's, it's a little bit of an issue, I think, in his game and how he moves laterally with that. And I, I don't understand quite why it is um, not as good as I would have, you know, just it just stands out to you, I guess, is the way that's the way I put it. But um, I think he's been taught really well out there at Alabama. He's got that move they do out there. Will Anderson was doing it last year. Turner does it as well. It's getting your hands up under that risk of wrist of the lineman, you know, and you raise the arms up and then you walk them back. And it's kind of a power move. It's a hand control move where you lock in on it and he can do it really well. As Anderson, that was kind of his master move that he'd like to go to a lot. So I like the kid's bag. I do. I, I just didn't quite see the upside to draw into the second round for me with him. But uh, he is at the very least going to give you a player that's going to play the run on early downs if he can't develop as a pass rusher. You're getting that as the floor. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, 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 I acknowledge that it's a little hypocritical of me to maybe put a prospect this high when he doesn't have bend because that's such an important thing to me. But I feel like he has – so much of everything else that is going to make him good in this league. Yeah. I think if you, if you can hand fight and you have a, a technician's mindset with how you use your hands, a plan of attack, counter moves, chaining moves together that can to me overcome the bend. And with him, that's what he does have. He's got mm -hmm. those things and that ability to do it. So it's, it's not necessarily to me, as you say, it's not the end of the world. If you don't have a guy that can't do that, but then he better have, he better have a bag of moves. You know, he better have some things he can call upon then because he is missing something that's so usually, um, necessary to be a really upper end quality edge in this sport. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's uh, keep it. This your last second round guy. Um, let's see here. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. I, I had Neeland right on the edge, right on the line, but I think I ended up putting him in the third. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's turn it over to the third then and go with my first guy who really did kind of dip down the boards guy. One time people thought was going to be a first round pick here. And, uh, just the, the, the testing process hasn't been, hasn't been a kind one to yeah. Mr. Uh, Braylon Trice, our university of Washington product, um, six foot four, two forty five. arms came in a little bit short. Testing numbers came in real slow on the 40 one, six, five isn't uh, awful, but it's definitely not good for what you're looking for there. What uh, what's the conclusions that you've come to with Braylon Trice about the player he is going to be in this league? Well, I mean, it, it's it's not okay. It's not okay to have a one six five ten yard split when you're two hundred and forty five pounds. That's mysterious. It's like he was injured, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't know any better, I'd say he got bad advice and tried to do the combine while he was hurt. Yeah. 100%. Um, now I think he's got the drive and passion to succeed. Uh, I think he has the, he has bend. I think he does have the ability to bend the corner. Uh, he's got some moves as well. He's got some legitimate pass rush moves. He's got good punches that he can throw on offensive tackles to take control of the rep. And he's got some pretty good strength for a guy who's this size. A lot of these 
edges who are this size don't have strength like this. Um, but he's got short arms on top of the terrible testing numbers. Yeah, 32 and a half inch arms. That's, yeah, that's not really exciting you. That's not <laughs> buttering your biscuit. Yeah. Uh, doesn't really tackle very well. He's not very good at block shedding. Sometimes his punches get a little bit wild. They're effective, but I think he can sometimes mistime them. Leverage is a problem for him. He plays standing straight up. And sometimes I feel like the bigger offensive linemen just swallow him up. So it's hard to get hyped on this one anymore. I, I, I think he'll find some success in the NFL because he's got tri a bag of tricks rushing the passer and he gives effort. I put him in the late third round, but it's hard to circle the wagons around this one anymore. It is. You're looking for that track record of a guy that's at 165 at his weight. And I think he had to thin down to get to 245. He does play bigger than that on the football field. Mm -hmm. And and so that's he is kind of falling that lanes where he's not quite a quick guy and he's also not quite a power guy. He's not quite a pure technician guy, though he's got good hands. He does have a smart plan of attack and he does execute it well, Brendan. But I, I do agree it's there is a bit of some ups and downs here with him. Um I do love his little ghost move, spin move, inside rip. He's got a couple things, and he can go between the two of them to keep the cat the tackle guessing. So he does set up the tackle and what I was seeing and how he puts his moves together out there, playing and play out. Um, but I did think with where he's normally, I think he played 255, 260. And I did feel like, you know, he did improve on the run this year from 2022. It did get a little bit better from where it had been. But I still feel like for a guy that size who's not bringing the quickness, I, I want the run defense to be better at that point at your size. I want you to be more solid on that area. And unfortunately, unfortunately it's a bit of a question mark for him coming into the league as a run defender right now and what he's going to bring there. Um, average athleticism, the further he goes in space, the more you feel his lack of explosiveness. And uh, these are the things that kind of dip him down, but it does speak to the fact that he can have those dips, Brendan, and you still end up putting him in the third round because the guy gets to the quarterback. And he understands how to do it. And he's shown it for two years. He's created a, a gobsmack of just pressures across the board on top of the 17 sacks or whatever he's had in two uh -huh. seasons. So I do think he's going to bring something to the league. But uh, yeah, there's some worrisome parts here that have, have, have sort of uh, cropped up here once um, we got through the, the draft process to really look at his measurables and where he's at. I mean, he tried to, he had to slim down to 245 and still 472. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I, I think okay, that's so right. You know, your natural weight's 255, 260. So what does that mean? You're a 4A guy at that weight then? Yeah. And, you know, as someone who watched the Huskies all year last year, I thought he started out really slow. And by the end of the year, he was really going. Second mm -hmm. half of the year, he really turned it on. So I was kind of intrigued by him. But then it's really hard to get hyped on a guy who tests like that. I know it's just testing numbers, but that that's tough to overcome. I tried when I looked at last night and prepping for the show, Brendan was going back and looking at guys specifically what I locked in is, you know, give me a guy at 245 pounds running a one, six, five, 10 yard split. And, and give me, give me that guy who's had success over the last 10 years in that range. And I, I wasn't able to really find much in there of a guy that was able to be successful at that point. If you're going to be the one, six, five, then it's two sixty five. You should be coming in at, you know, you should be a big edge at that point, kind of down at that, at that split. And he might be in a little bit of a no man's land, with, with these testing numbers and just his, his explosiveness, athleticism to be able to withstand it at the pro level. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's keep it moving here to my, um, uh, in fact, I probably have this guy over ahead of Trice. So I got a little ahead on my third round here. I'm with you. I think Trice is more of a late third round guy at this point. Mm -hmm. A guy that has raised up on my board quite a bit, and I've I've liked for a while here. Um, don't know if he'll be as much of a fit for us, Brendan, because he's a little bit of a smaller cat. But that's going to be uh, Muhammad Kamara out of Colorado State. I thought a really really fun edge to watch on tape. Yeah, I uh, I took a look at Kamara, uh, Colorado State, the Rams. Um, really good testing, ran fast, quick, one five eight ten yard split, uh, explosive as well production over the last two years has been great. A lot of these, you know, it seems like a lot of these defensive uh, front seven guys had their production really drop off in 2023 from 2022. This guy didn't. No. 13 sacks last year. Over the last two years combined, he has 33 <laughs> tackles for loss. <laughs> um, Got really good get off at the snap. His first step is like very, very quick off the snap. Uh, plenty of pass rush moves that he can throw at linemen as well. He's got legitimate moves. He's somebody who keeps fighting and will keep countering and countering and countering until he wins the rep. He can stack moves on top of moves until he wins. He's short, 
which does come with problems, but it does allow him to win the leverage battle. Shit. Hopefully I didn't just mess up my deal here. <laughs> Shit. You okay? Yeah, hold on. Okay. I don't know if I should keep talking or not, so I'm just going to nod and let um, him sort this stuff out real quick. All right, keep going. My bad, Darren. Uh -huh, no problem. Um, I think he sets the edge against the run well. Uh, some of the issues that I found with him were he bends at the waist into contact. Into contact. He, he doesn't like stay balanced when he's engaging. He gets a little over eager and he bends at the waist, which is something that sh coaching should be able to clean up. Um, yeah. Misses too many tackles. Doesn't really have bend also. So pretty exciting 3-4 edge prospect. I put him in the early fourth or late third. I, I do. Uh, I did come around on Kamara pretty well as I explored him. Yeah, I I just thought he was a, an absolute um, just dynamo coming off that edge. He's an edge attacker, Brendan. He presses that arc, and he really that one five eight. It might not even capture fully his ten yard split with how quick it really. I think truly is, and um, I I just kind of kept coming back to again and again. Um, Loving every snap after snap, what I was seeing from from effort, from having a plan of attack and using his hands. He's got dip, he's got bend, he's got the first step quickness. He checks a lot of boxes here. Now, six one is definitely troublesome, but then he almost comes in with the well over 32 arms. So, I mean, those aren't long arms, but it's also not obscenely small, like 31 inches would have been horrible on him, right? At six one, you go, Oh, that's that's just not gonna work. Um, he'll kill you on the backside of the run game if you leave him unblocked. He's one of those guys that you're going to try to run a, 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 you know, an edge run out here or a pitch play out here. He'll catch back up to it if you don't try to put an arm on him. Um, I love the hustle and fight. Just gets after it. And he understands how to rush the pass or he can get skinny. And there's so many little things he does as a pass rusher that you want to see from pass rushers in general. And he's got them all kind of in his bag to utilize. Um, it's really hard to find the Holy Trinity skill set, Brendan, of quickness, dip, and bend. You mentioned quickness and bend. I agree with you. Those are two things. I'd, I'd offer if you can put dip in there as well. If I can dip down and then get to a bend after I've had first step quickness and explosion, that makes me naturally a really tough pass rusher to deal with. Doesn't matter what hand fighting I bring at that point. That's good to bring that too. But I've, I've been able at that point to really establish myself as challenging you as a tackle because I'm going to test that athleticism every time getting the edge with that at that point. So I, I did like him early in the third round. Um, I think he's going to have some good upside to his game, even at 6'1 here, Brendan. And that's that's the worry I have as much as anything with him. It's just that 6'1 size, how that's going to work, and maybe not as long arms. But I just feel like his explosiveness will translate, and he'll find a way to at least be productive, if not fully a starter in this league, that he will get the passer and that he will be good against the run. He'll be a good overall player, even if in just in short bursts. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm into him as well. I think I would – wait until the late third, but I, I, I think third round is about where I ended up on him. Um, kind of close between that and the early fourth though. I get it. And six, one, you know, how many, how many edge rushers do we have in this league right now? Brandon with six, one that are doing anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Did the saints have that one guy for a while who was pretty good. Who was really short. I can't remember his name. Did they? Who were we thinking? Oh yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, you're thinking a little bit a, a while mm -hmm. back, right? Yeah. I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Now, there's been a couple of them, but yeah, can't remember the name, but I know they exist. You're dealing with that six foot five tackle, and you're six one. It's it's tough. Uh, Chen is a little bit undersized, right? He's six two or something. Mm. Are we really going to grandstand over one inch here? Yeah, I, I know. I, I know. I don't think so. So, do you think if you were if you're picking, you obviously late third round, you're picking him there. If the Hawks trade back and they have an early third round pick, are you a yay on that kind of deal at that point with him, or is that still too early then for you? Um. Early third, I mean, I wouldn't be angry about it, but I would still be kind of like, I, I, I don't know if what he has is enough to justify early third, but I wouldn't be upset about it. At the end of the day, we got a player that I liked. Yeah, I, I, I'd i be excited about him. He's another guy that might be a pound the table guy for me in this draft where I just, I, I love the tape so much that I go, I don't care. I'll, I'll do it. If in third round, I'm I'm jumping at that point, I'll be perfectly uh, perfectly happy with it. Well, I had a pretty thin third round group here, Brendan. It was Trice, Kamura, and Braswell for me. Did you have any other uh, third round guys that I might have missed here? I know you had Neeland. Yeah, there was Neeland. Um, I had him in my. Um, I had him in my third round. I also had uh, one other guy. I don't know if you have this guy or not, Jonah Ellis. I do have Jonah Ellis. Yeah, I've um, I've got him in the fourth. Mm. Okay, yeah, I did have Jonah Ellis in my third. 
And uh, was that it? Um, I think that is... No, I had a Gabriel Murphy as well, actually. Oh, wow. You, you like Gabe. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's do Jonah first. So okay. give, me the, give me the goods from your standpoint on Jonah, kid out of Utah. All right. Uh, hold on one second here. I lost my place in my overly large document here. Um, 300 pages. One day I'll publish it, but nobody's going to read it because it's 300 pages. Who am I kidding? I know. I was, I was thinking about putting mine on Amazon. <laughs> Just for the hell of it, you know. There's the draft guide over here. Just to see. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Utah, 21 years old, 6'2", 248, 33-inch arms. Uh, really good production last year. 12 sacks, 16 tackles for loss. He's got a wide range of pass rush moves. He's coming out of college at 21 years old, ready to put the moves on people. High effort, goes until the whistle blows. Always the low man in leverage. He's 6'2 and knows how to get low. Sinks the hips. He anchors down to hold the edge really well uses his hands really well, and he can get around the edge fast. His first step quickness is nice. Hmm. Uh, some of the issues, probably needs to add a little more muscle in the NFL. Um, doesn't really have the bend that you're looking for. He doesn't really have the edge rusher bend. Had some injuries in his career, and sometimes his movement isn't fluid. But I think he's going to uh, have all-around good stuff going on here. I think that he's going to be a good pass rusher and a good run defender. I don't think he'll ever become a true star, but he can be a three down player. And I wouldn't mind a third round pick on him at all. Yeah. I, I think he's got a pretty good game. I've, I've referenced him to Nick Airbig, the kid out of Wisconsin edge rusher last year that went to the Steelers. I think similar size, similar way they win first step quickness, um, whatnot. I found his run defense to be just okay. in what I watched, I thought he could get pushed around. I think he sometimes struggles to locate the ball carrier, even when the guy is near around him and he has an opportunity to go and do something. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did think he's got a good plan A. I don't know if he's got a good plan B, but the plan A is usually good when he's planned on it. He set it up. He can go to a variety of different things. He's got some hand fighting to him that I liked. Um, I also feel like sometimes he can get stuck on blocks. So big things with me on him is stuck on blocks and not awareness in space at all times. Those were kind of two big things where it's not a matter of necessarily setting the edge being a problem with it, Brendan. It's that, okay, you set the edge, but then, you know, the guy goes around your outside shoulder, disengage off the block, go make the tackle, or it's coming back inside, work your way back inside to help and get, be, be a part of the play and, you know, factor in his effort is solid. So I don't want it to seem like I'm knocking his effort, just awareness in spaces, mm -hmm. I think just a little bit challenged. And that's what dipped him down for me in the fourth round. I think he's got tools to be a third rounder, uh, no doubt about that, but that I thought that there was just enough little, little chinks in the armor there that you could kind of bring him down one more round for me with that from what I saw from him. Well, since he's only 21, I kind of look at that and I go, that's something he should be able to learn. He should be able to improve on just making the natural improvements that you would expect to make um, when you're going to 22 and 23 years old. It is possible. I will say I, I have faith, Brennan, in guys that can get better with hand fighting and can get stronger and their technique can get better. I, I do wonder if maybe awareness is something that you have or don't. Mm. And, you know, I mean, maybe there's certain guys that, and especially watching some of the tape on these guys in the draft we've watched this year where, you know, they're locked into the block and they're going to get into their hand fighting and they're going to get into, you know, Braden Fisk is like this, where it's like, he's going to get in there and he's going to start, you know, it, it's a great bar fight and it looks cool. And the guy's given everything he's got, but then the ball carrier floats by his outside shoulder and you go, okay, but you, you had a chance to jump in that play, but you're too busy hand fighting and doing what you're doing. And it's like, can you, some guys can't kind of chew gum and walk at the same time a little bit where it's like, well, if I'm locked in, I can't be as aware of that thing in space. I've got to be locked in on this guy that I'm trying to get off the block of. I, that's the worry. I think I have a little bit with him on that. And that does that awareness come forward? And I'm not saying I know for sure. It may be a, something you can grow with time and get better at with that. But mm -hmm. I wonder if that's also maybe just a trade. It's comes off the back of the truck or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you had uh Neyland left. I believe you said still in the third. Yeah. I had Neyland in my third round range. Yes. All right. Let me see if I can find him there. There we go. Boom. Well, let's talk about Marshawn Lynn. This is a very interesting guy. We re referenced earlier on this, Brennan, a guy that Seahawks fans should be paying very, very close attention to. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of got tweener size. He's 267. So that's certainly different than what we usually look at. Long arms, 34 and a half inches. Uh, combine scores were pretty good, especially given how big he is, right? 475 at 267 is pretty good. His uh, jumps were pretty good. Almost jumped 10 feet on his broad. 
Uh, change of direction skills are great, actually. His change of direction scores, really, really good. Um, good production over the last couple of years. Not a lot of sacks, but he's out there grinding for Western Michigan. By the way, not Western Kentucky. Some people, somebody in the chat said Western Kentucky. Western Michigan, actually. So not a lot of tape out there, but from what I can tell, he's got tremendous strength. He's really strong holding up against the run. His flexibility allows him to play multiple roles up front. He can beat you with power and he can beat you with quickness. He's got a high motor that always runs and he's got some pass rush moves. It's not just all bull rushing or all speed rushing. He can actually put some moves on you. Now, I don't know if he's enough of an athlete to be a full-time edge rusher, at least not in the traditional sense. He He's a tweener, right? He's kind of stuck between edge rusher and down lineman. Uh, played mostly against lesser competition at Western Michigan, and people are going to be concerned about that, and they should be probably, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so he's clearly a really good player. It wouldn't surprise me if he was destined to end up as a five tech somewhere in the NFL. But I feel like he's going to be good wherever he ends up because he's just a good player that I've ended up being pretty interested in. Yeah, he's uh, he's a fun player to watch. The the Western Kentucky or Western Michigan tape is um, it, it's definitely sparse. So there's not as much tape to go on on this guy as we have with other guys that we're looking at in this hedge class. Um, to your point, his stack and shed, his stack and ability, he's got that 34 and a half inch long arms and his ability to lock those arms out and use them to the maximum effect which just really reinforces his power and ability to set that edge, a hard edge. We get back to that, set those hard edge. That's what we're going to need right now. And, you know, Mafe will set the hard edge. I think Uchenna can, but with Hall and Taylor, it's not something you have. And I think this is where there's a big opening in this draft for edges for the Hawks to go find a guy like this that they can lean on. If it's just to be for early rundowns to make sure that they've got that, that edge set the way that they want it set. And he's really good with that, Brendan. Like you said, the efforts is pretty – is really nice. You can see he's a guy that plays with his high hair on fire. Sometimes gets him in trouble because he gets outside of his gap responsibility when he gets downhill. And it's like they get back into the, his original gap because he was trying to chase to where the play wasn't going. So there's sometimes where the aggressiveness can, I think, you know, cost him. He has the heavy hands where, and he strikes him right and he can lock him out and use him where some of those long arm guys just can't do that. But He's not a hand fighter. He's not a technician. He's not going to give you any kind of real pass rush moves. It's just lock you out and, and just hold you. You know, that's kind of his thing. Or try to stack and shed you where it's lock you out and then throw you away. You know, he's going to do a little bit of that Darius Robinson type of stuff where it isn't, it isn't artistic, Brendan. You know, it isn't, it isn't going to win any style points, but it is effective when you are that strong um, in that kind of tweener edge of things. And I just think he's got two sledgehammer hands that he can drive. I mean, that's the thing with him is those hands are really strong with that length and it really gives him sort of an extra, extra titch of power to his game. Even for a guy at 6'3", 267, you might not see. It's like he's kind of got like 6'3", 285 worth of power with those long arms. I wish I had a little bit more tape to see on him, Brendan, to get a little bit more of a full flavor of view of what he could do as far as pass rusher and whatnot in it. But Used a little bit as a spinner too. Put up in the uh, a, you know AB gap, standing up at times, was comfortable doing that type of stuff. So maybe gives you a little bit of versatility along that defensive line as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pretty into him. I'm pretty into him. And if we trade into the late second and end up with him, I'm really not going to be unhappy about that either. I can't do second with him. I'm 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 a fourth round guy, but I got to acknowledge too. I. I've seen so little tape on this guy versus some of the other guys in this draft. It's not a, a conclusion that I'm confidently within because, you know, I might've seen the rest of that tape and it had ro rolled me over to the place you're talking about where I'm saying, Oh yeah, second round sounds just perfectly fine for me. Let's jump on that. Mm -hmm. But um, he just doesn't hand fight enough. There's not enough dip and bend. There's not, uh, you know, he's not, I don't know. Whereas West, Western Michigan, he can be kind of a bully out there. Is that bully power going to translate as well mm -hmm. with the competition level when it so supremely takes a jump up next year when he goes to the pros? He's an interesting prospect, unique in this draft. I think him and Robinson are very kind of, you know, their own kind of guys like that, right? Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of these guys stacked up that can do this stuff. So, you know, you it, it may be a one or the other that we see with the Hawks that they look to take considering the need. But yeah. I wouldn't mind him. in the In the late third, I wouldn't mind him. Fourth round would be great to be able to land in there. It does seem like he's probably with his rep right now. You're probably hearing the same where he's he's being driven up to where he might go into the second round with some of the hype he's getting at this point. Yeah, um, he's projected as a second rounder on the aggregate right now. Yeah, he's he's been going the bullet, the bullet. He's the guy like if you have his name, there'd be a bullet next to it on the other side of it going up. You know, like he's he's definitely um, getting hotter and hotter. It seems like as the draft is approaching. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've got him in the fourth round along with Jonas Ellis in that side of it. Was that the last of your third round guys? 
Um, it was oh, no, you had Mar- I had Murphy. Murphy. Okay. You're going to have to sell me on this Murphy one. Mm, okay. Not feeling it? I'm not feeling Murphy. All right. So the way I see it, he's got a quick first step and he's got bend. He's got those two qualities. That is something that I'm definitely going to give a lot of credence to. When you have the quick first step with the bend, it allows you to get the corner on these tackles and get to the quarterback. I think he's good with his hands, knows how to use his hands to win reps. He's got pass rush moves. It's not just all speed. So he can combine his speed with his moves to win a lot of reps. I like the way he times his punches. I think he uh, he lined up all over the place in UCLA's defense over his career. They were using him as a down lineman, you know, three-point stance, two-point stance, four-point stance. Going to be a great fit for a 3-4 defense as well. Now, the issues are clear. He's got really short arms, like like critically short arms. So once somebody gets a block on him, he's done. The play's over because he's not going to be able to shed anybody. Mm-hmm. He does get bullied a little bit against the run. He's not that strong. And he doesn't really have a bull rush. I just see this guy being able to be a really, really good pass rusher part-time in the NFL. But he's got like like the short arms are unfortunate. But I feel like as long as you keep him off the field on rundowns, on early downs, and you just use him on passing downs, he's gonna bring so much to the table that I do think he's worth about a third round pick. I, I think he brings almost all the traits you would want from a pass rusher. To the table except probably just the arm length yeah i i think just from my perspective on this it's all about a little bit of track record you know i and i'm i'm not i'm putting you on the spot with this but it's you know how many guys at 30 and a half inch arms do we know of in this league that's gone out there and been capable pass rushers uh, in recent history i i can't think of many that have come across that have been able to get around that you know it's you want 32 inches that's an inch and a half that's minimum 30 you want really 33 so he's two and a half inches shorter on his arms than you would like. And it shows on the tape where longer tackles can get into him. I mean, you mentioned the run game. That's the thing to me would take him in the third round. You're taking a guy that gives you nothing in the run game in the third round. So he better be really good as a pass rusher at that point if you're taking him that early. Because mm-hmm. that's not coming. The run mm-hmm. defense is never coming. It's not developing. It's not a part of what he's going to he's gonna bring there. And I, I think I wasn't as convinced as you were with the bend. I, I think he's a straight line speed guy, and I think there's not as much bend there as needs to be with some of the detriments that he has working against him. Um, it's just those things to me kind of got me. He's got some good hand fighting ability. There is some talent here. I'll give you that. The first step quickness is legit, Brendan. It is. And um, he actually was pretty strong at the point of attack in the run game. So even though those short arms were there, he held up. But there were... Overall times where you could see on certain tackles that they were going to get the best of him just due to that size and length that he can't do anything, you know, really about. And he's just not quite strong enough, I think, to make it happen at that size. I felt like he had some tight hips. It's a little bit of why I felt like he also had some issues at times in bending. I just really wasn't, I was really out in a major way on Gabriel. Um, I see a more sixth round kind of guy because I just don't, one one part, you can only do one part of the game defensively anyway, and I don't think that one part of the game you do, I, I just don't see 30 and a half inch arms working at the next level. These guys now, these tackles are at 34, 35 inch long arms. You know, what is that guy going to do against that? What is it, what's, his, what's he going to do, you know? Yeah, it is a concern. I think he can overcome it enough to be really good though. I, I, I like everything else he's bringing to the table as a rusher though. I like his first step. I think there's bend there. I think he can use his hands well. I think he's got the pass rush moves. I like his punches. I I don't know. I think maybe it's not a great fit for what we're doing necessarily because I think McDonald does like bigger guys in general. But I don't know. I was into this one. Okay. Do you think you're just maybe bringing in though a guy that's like Daryl Taylor light at that point if you're bringing him at that spot? I mean, all Daryl Taylor does is like he's got like one move, I feel like. I don't feel like Daryl Taylor has a bunch of moves. This guy has moves. Yeah, but Dale Taylor's also probably more sudden than him. Mm, yeah, probably. <clears throat> but, no, I get it. I get it. It'll be interesting to see where he goes between our two, because this is the one that I think of all the prospects we've done that there's the widest discrepancy mm-hmm. in our, our two outlooks on it. Mm-hmm. But we'll see where he goes on it, man. Maybe maybe he does get p- plucked up there in the third. Did you have another uh, third one? I don't think so. I, I, I don't. Yeah, we already did Kamara, right? We did Kamara, yep. Yeah, I I don't think I had another third rounder. No, I didn't. Okay. 
We'll turn it over here into my start of my fourth round here. Uh, another guy that I like really a lot in this draft. I don't see star power with him, but I just like him. If you can get him at the right place, I wouldn't be mad. I, I think there's a chance he's not on our list because of uh, some lack of size. But a uh, small school kid, another one out of Troy, Javon mm -hmm. Solomon, mm -hmm. uh, who I've yep. got a comp of a Chenna Nuwosu on. Okay. You like that comp? Um, I think so. Let me take a look at what I had on him. Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Javon Solomon. Uh, so Troy Trojans. And by the way, there's a little bit of a lineage there for good pass rushers, right? Because they had Demarcus Ware and mm -hmm. O.C. Minora. So even though they're a small school, they like to produce these really good pass rushers. Uh, 33 and 7 eighth arms. So he's got long arms. A little bit undersized. He's kind of small. Uh, combine was more good than bad, although he doesn't really have the 10-yard uh, the, uh, split that you'd prefer. Yeah. But the explosiveness is definitely there. Yeah. Uh, over the last two years, he's been very productive. Last year, he had 16 sacks, 90.8 PFF grade. He's strong for an edge rusher. He's got impressive strength for an edge rusher. He's got <clears throat> he's got decent arm length. Uh, short height makes winning leverage battles easier. Um, legit first step and legit bend. He's got both those qualities as well, which is big. Now, he does get pushed around a little bit because of his smaller size. He's not going to be a very good run defender. And the bigger offensive linemen are going to eat him up. And he did play at Troy, so he's not playing the best of the best. But I like him. I think he'll come off the bench in a part-time role and be explosive and a toolsy rusher. I think you'll get good value out of him as soon as you let him occupy that role. So I'd say open season as soon as day three kicks off. Yeah, he's my first guy. I've got on my fourth round uh, list here, Brendan, just because I do like what he brings. 16 sacks last year on top of being the ninth highest rated edge by PFF overall. So he he really did put together the production, um, even being that small school guy. Just a rare blend to me of Ben, Dip, and Power. He gives you all three of those things, and that's something you don't tend to find. Um, and the power part being six one is what really helps him because, like you say, that natural leverage he gets the win, and then he's got the power to get up under the pads of the and the length, almost thirty four inch long arms. It kind of all works really well together. He's, he's uniquely built. It's usually six one guys, we'd be looking at like you know Murphy kind of arms, right? We'd be looking mm -hmm. at you know thirty thirty one and a half inch arms. We're going well, but there's some stuff here where I think he can actually use this at the pro level. Um, he didn't light it up at the Senior Bowl, Brendan. The, it's been an okay post pre-draft process but the tape when you just turn that back on with him really flashes all over the place and a guy that i just feel like will find a home here in this league it, at the very least is a, a rotational rusher early on who could kind of develop like that uchenna nuos who did where it took him a couple of years and then he found a home as a starter here once he came over mm -hmm. from uh from the chargers but i do like i do like solomon he's a really good player yeah he's definitely intriguing to me i'm pretty on board with all that uh, next guy I've got up in uh, my fourth round is going to be Jacine Davis out of Wake Forest. I'm not sure I looked at this guy, so you may have to take it away on this one. Okay. This may be one of those ones, too, that might have been just a uh, gone back to school and I didn't notice thing, too, because he hasn't got any testing numbers here. So um, strong production. Last three years of Wake Forest posted 20 sacks in three seasons while playing strong run defense. His hips are a bit tight, doesn't have ideal bend. Um, he can dip, though, and, and he has a little ghost move in that dip. You know, that dip to the ghost move, he can do that, and he calls upon it quite a bit. Um, I think he can stand up or put his hands in the dirt, violent hands plus power, good awareness in space, help him make plays, really good on stunts, getting lateral, also uh, feeling the, protect, the protections and where they're soft when he's running those stunts. He knows how to find the hole, the crack in the protections. High motor, always going hard. He's not the most naturally gifted, but he gets it done with effort, technique, and want. I really like how he loads up his moves as a pass rusher off the snap. It just feels like it's it's like a power meter with him, Brendan, where it's like, do, 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 you know, and he's hitting the top of the power meter as he's about to land the strike. Mm -hmm. And you really feel that um, um, just that it's all working together on that, that the setup's working together, his feet are together. There's no wasted motion. So I did like him. I thought he brings good size for the position. I might be wrong on that he maybe he'd end up going back. You know, we had some of these guys that were late ones returning, so I might have been wrong on this one. But uh, okay. like his game, if he is coming back, I do think as a day early day three guy, if he is uh, if he is coming out. Okay, all right, that sounds pretty good to me. But yeah, I did not look at him. I did not have him. No worries. There's a lot of these guys, so it's, it's a, we're gonna. I'm gonna have a few of mine on. You'll probably have a few on yours list that I haven't gotten to either. 
Yeah, and someone in the comments just said that he did go back to Wake Forest. He did. Okay, I figured I was getting the feeling on that one. So, okay. Um, let's go to the next fourth round guy I have that I know is in this draft for sure. Um, and that's going to be Brennan Jackson, a local kid out of Washington State. Brennan, I know mm -hmm. you've looked at this guy. Right. So the thing that kind of stands out about him would be how good he is against the run. It uh, stands out even compared to the elite edges in this class, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I um, He might also be able to play some inside. He might be kind of like a, almost like a Draymond Jones where he can do a little bit inside and outside. Um, excellent all-around run defender. He shoots gaps and he can hold his ground and not give up um, and not give up ground against run blocking. He chases down plays really well to the opposite side. He's a smart player. He reads and diagnoses plays and acts on his read. He's uh, somebody who always gives a lot of effort. Now, I do wonder if he'll be a little bit of a tweener in the NFL. I don't think he currently offers a ton as a pass rusher, although he does have good production over the last couple of years. I don't think he's got, you know, any next level moves. I don't know how much of it's going to work at the NFL level. Um, he doesn't really have that much going on in terms of like, you know, a rip or a, or a, a swim or anything like that. Um, the testing was also a little bit all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't put him in day two because he doesn't really affect the pass the way I would like yet. And you got to be able to affect the pass if you're going to be highly touted. But I think he's going to improve in those areas. I think he's going to be really valuable on early downs. So I would put him in the fourth round. Yeah, fourth round, of course, here for me too, Brandon. I think the you mentioned is uh, right is that he can he can play the run. Let's first start with that with him, and that he's he will play the run. He can be in there as an early down run defender. I think at the NFL level and and give you competent good play, not dominant, but good competent play out there. It's a guy that maybe serves as sort of that third rung of a hard edge, Brandon. You know, you got Darius Robinson and then Marshawn Nealon, and then Brennan's maybe your sort of your third tier guy if you can't get those first two. I love that he's going 100 miles an hour every snap. You know, and and three year starter. Um, like you say, he's smart and aware of where the run plays are going. He seems to have good instincts of how to get there, even when it's far away from him. He's always going to give you max effort every single play, every, uh, you know, every time he's out there, he's got some true power to his game. He's 264 at the combine, Brandon, but I think he probably played like 275, you know, where there was some real legit power in there, I think from him on that side of things. Um, dipping and bending is not his forte. He has the absolute opposite of that stuff. So it's all got to be power with him, which is a little bit of why I would say I don't have as much confidence that the pass rush moves are going to develop, but I do have confidence that he can be the early rundown defender that can set the edge and a hard edge at that and can also be active in the run game to get you some tackles and, and be, be Oregon State, though, and him going up against Fawaga. Fawaga owned him. You know, and that's the, that's one where you're really looking at that kind of thing. You're not expecting him being that they're two different prospect states to him go out there and really give it to him. But if you can show me a couple times in there, maybe there's a little bit of like, okay, there's some flashes here of that improvement will come in his ability to rush the passer. But it wasn't. He had nothing he could offer or throw at Fulonga that was even a little bit challenging in that game, in my opinion. And that it just that wasn't the only way I watched with him, but just one that stood out to me where I went, okay, there's just not really the pass rush upside here. Still, fourth round, power edge, plays the run really well. Something we got, we do need in this defense, Brendan. And again, I've heard it over and over listed with Mike McDonald as being one of the leading things that he starts of with his defense is those hard edges that he can set and stopping the run in general. Mm -hmm. uh, you're Impressive. Impressive. No, no, I was just going to say I like him. Here's a guy I don't know if you're going to be as high in on. I was also, I have this guy in the fourth round and I just really liked his tape. He was a real fun rusher. He's not going to light the world on fire with his testing numbers here, Brendan, but a guy I did put in the fourth round again here, and that's Austin Booker of Kansas. Uh, really, really fun tape to watch. I felt like with him, but man did not test too well. Yeah. I put him in my fourth round as well. He's in oh, my okay. fourth round and all the big boards have him in the third, by the way. So you're not in bad company if you oh, like. Oh yeah, him. that's good to hear. I, I I thought I might be on the ledge with this one, or on the you know on the edge of the branch with this one. No, um, he is 240, so he's definitely lighter than most of the edge guys we look at. But he's got long arms that he knows how to use well. Knows how to lock out offensive linemen with his long arms. He's got a quick first step. He can handle zone drops. He's got good closing speed. He doesn't necessarily have good speed, but his closing speed's pretty good. Mm -hmm. should be able to play multiple roles on a defense, I think, as well. I think he'll be able to do a few different things. The testing numbers were not only not good, they were disappointing because one of the uh, things billed about him coming out of Kansas was he's a really good athlete. 
And then mm. for him to test like that is like, ugh. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of strength. He is undersized. Now he is six foot four and a half. He could add weight if he needs to. He has the frame for it. Um, he loses the leverage battle a lot because he is a little bit tall, and he doesn't really have bend. He does. He has the first step quickness, but not the bend. So I think he just needs to add some muscle, and then maybe we can start trying to figure this one out. I'm feeling it in about the fourth round, personally. I think that's about right. So yeah, I'm I'm close to where you are. I think. Yeah, it's 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 fourth round for me too. The tough part with him as well, Brendan, is five hundred and five snaps in his college career. So you you have really not a lot to go off of with this kind of guy. Um, and and how to do it? But I there was I just like the way he came off the ball. He's almost like a little like cross country skiing kind of gait to him coming off the thing, where it's just the feet are sort of sliding across the ground, but then he can kind of change direction where he goes because he's got those feet always so kind of right near the ground to make that move and change the direction a little bit. Some of that athleticism that he can bring into play. Um, I did think he had a little bit of dip, but like I said, not a big bender, not necessarily first step quickness guy. I thought he played stronger than his thin build. I mean, there's no doubt about it when you watch him on the field. That there's that it's it's it feels almost rail thin a little bit, but that he did play pretty strong with it. He used his length, and I didn't see him getting attacked in the run game necessarily. And I thought he was a smart and active run defender on top of that, where he's going to find the play, he's going to get off the block, he's going to give you that closing speed, which I think, as you can see, I put it as his patented move here, Brendan, below here in the notes, where that is this thing that stands out, where you feel this guy. It's, it's, it's a uh, bit like Turner Dallas Turner was this way too, where when they sense the ball carriers near them, it's almost like they get a little like turbo button push to get to the ball carrier, get to the quarterback. And you love the, you love the players that can finish, especially coming off the edge, because that does build to me a lot of confidence that that's a guy that's going to not just get pressures. He'll get actual sacks at the pro level with being able to get on top of those quarterbacks so fast without them, you know, thinking, Oh, I got an minute. I got an extra second here to get the ball out of my hand. I'm like, no, you don't. I'm on top of you. So, um, just liked him, but it, it's hard with the 500 snaps, Brendan, because there's so little that you're going off of with him. I just think there's a natural ability that he has, even running that slow ass four hit four seven nine one six seven. I mean, there's some thoughts looking at his testing scores, Brendan. You could easily just go, well, that sort of negates you. You know, you're a sixth, seventh round guy now off those testing scores, but you have to kind of go back to the tape, don't you? And eventually, you got to let the tape end up informing you at the end of the day overall. You're muted. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. But at the same time, when I look at something like this and the testing numbers contradict the tape, it does make you wonder, is it a level of competition thing, I think? I think that's where you bring that in, especially when you're talking about a smaller school guy. Not that Austin Booker is, but, uh, you know, I, I think there is a point where you go, well, okay, he did this in college. Is he going to be able to do this in the NFL? Yeah, I. It, it's He's a tough evaluation off the edge of this class, Brendan. There's, there are things to be excited about, but there are those worrisome spots you'd look to, especially taking them in the fourth round where you're like, yeah, but there's this. Yeah, but there's that. 500 snaps, thin build, testing number's not good. But boy, he looks like a good player in the field, a good overall player on the field, both run and pass. He can give you something. So uh, it, he's one of those guys going to be very interesting to see where he goes because of his skill set and, and the sample size and all of that. But you might find yourself a really good player at that point. You know, he's got a lot of up, upside to him because he's only played so little – up until this point. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, last fourth round guy I've got is Javante Jean Batiste out of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. I did look at him. I do have him, but I'll tell you, um, I wasn't too excited with this one, mostly because of the uh, first step. The first step is not particularly good in my estimation. Uh, he's It's sluggish. He's tall and he plays with a high pad level no strength to speak of. He's actually lighter than Austin Booker and he doesn't shed tacklers because he's not strong enough to do it. Only real pass rush move is a bull rush. Um, I do like his effort to chase down plays from the backside. He's slippery. It's one of those, it's kind of almost like, not that he's anywhere near as good as this guy, but uh Kalija can see last year. It's just hard to lay a good block on him for some reason. Um, he does have a little bit of bend, but I feel like mm. it gets wiped out by that first step. Um, mm. he's got lively hands, so I ended up putting him in like the sixth or seventh round. I wasn't into it. I just, um, the first step kind of killed it for me. Well, I think I solidified him in the fourth round for me. And maybe this is a bit of a, you know, kind of a standard for me on the fourth round with these edges, Brendan, be it uh, Brendan Jackson or Marshawn Nealon, two guys that have gone in this round for me as well. Um, if you bring into me that run, run stuffing ability. And I know, and I feel like it's going to translate. I think he's going to be a rock 
against the run just as a useful base skill. Just that's you bring him out in base downs, your early downs, let him stop the run. I think he can provide that for you with what he brings with some of his power and his ability to set the edge and just how strong he was against the run. I think your evaluation of him as a pass rusher is accurate though. Um, okay, quickness at best. Uh, a smidge, a smidge of explosion. The bend is there. It is there. But as you said, it does get a little bit neutralized by the fact that you don't have the first step quickness. Not necessarily a dipper. He's more just a bender than he is anything else, um, which can work. But that's where I do worry with him on is the upside. Does Is there much upside here with him as a pass rusher versus is he just going to be an early down run defender? And I just kind of put those guys in that slated spot where if you're an edge guy that I know you'll have translating ability to get to play the run at the pro level, I'll, I'll slide you into that fourth even if there are some questions about you as a pass rusher, because I don't think that there's a lot of upside to Nealon as a pass rusher or Brennan Jackson as a pass rusher. But this guy, I think, stops the run very close to where those other two guys were at. Maybe not quite as good, but I think very close overall in what I saw off of tape of his ability to do that. All right. Okay, I can get behind that. I, I, he's just small and lean, so I don't know if he'll be able to stop the run that well in the NFL. I'm a little That's worried about that. Yeah, he's got the long arms. So he's always got the 34-inch long arms, which help him out a lot on that. And he's naturally a little bit bigger than you get on some of these edges. So I think that does help him. But, uh, you know, the pass rush is not there with him. So I, I can't deny that that's really not an upside you're going to find, I think, with uh, Javante. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have any other guys in your fourth round? Uh, I think I had a couple guys, but they were both kind of like Hail Mary guys, guys who gotcha. I understand probably shouldn't be there. But there's some really interesting potential that I can't, uh, that, that, that was hard for me to ignore. Mm -hmm. I'll put it to you that way. Let me pull up one of them. Uh, let me see here. He's right. Okay. Uh, Jalix Hunt. Okay. Are you familiar with Jalix Hunt? I am familiar with him, but I didn't have any tape that I could find on Jalix. He's out of, uh, a tiny, Houston tiny, Christian. Yeah. yeah. Houston Christian. I didn't have any Houston Christian tape I could go through. Yeah, he's got NFL size. He's got long arms. He tested really well. Big time at explosion out of his lower body. He's brand new to the position. He just moved to edge two years ago. I think he was playing safety before. Mm. So these things that he struggles with should get better pretty significantly over the next couple of years. Uh, really good athletic profile. He's already got good pass rush moves, even though he's relatively new to the position. He's already got some moves. He can zone drop and do it well. Safety background helps out a little bit. I think mm -hmm. he started out as a receiver, by the way. So he's been kind of all over. And okay. then he finally found a little bit of success here. He's just really, really raw. He gets out leveraged a lot. He played against really weak competition in college, gets pushed around in the run game. But I feel like these are all things that might get better in the coming couple of years because he's brand new to the position. So it is a little bit of a Hail Mary here. It could be like Reek Woolen, right? Mm -hmm. It could be a little Reek Woolen-y. Because the production's not there. not the, He hasn't been bad, but he's playing for Houston Christian. So on a certain level, like who, who even cares about that? So I wouldn't mind throwing up a fourth rounder on him just because I think that there's really high upside here. Logic makes sense. New guys to the position like that. You, there's a lot of reason to believe that the upside will be better with time going along. So makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. ton of sense. Who else you got in the fourth round? Um, that might have been it. I think I had Eric Watts right on the line, but I ended okay. up going fifth round on him. You went fifth round, and I got a six, six on Mr. Watts. So we'll cover. All right, him. so yeah, let's move ahead to the fifth round, I guess, because I don't think I have any more fourths. All right, at the uh, top of the fifth round, my first guy off the rip in the fifth is going to be Nelson Caesar of Houston. Did you have a chance to take a look at him? Yes, I did. I had a chance with the uh, Nelson Caesar. Let me find him here somewhere. Gotten all crossed up here with the order. I don't know. Six foot three, two fifty four, almost thirty four inch mm -hmm. long arms. So bring yeah. some nice, nice there. I uh, didn't fully test the combine. Yeah. So got what he did test there. was bad. Yeah, which makes you think that maybe the other that's the reason he didn't test the other stuff. You know, maybe that's it that would mm -hmm. carry over a little bit there. Good production last year. Um they actually played him some reps at stack linebacker last year uh, inside. Oh. So a little bit of flexibility, maybe. I'm not saying it's going to work in the NFL. It probably won't, but it's notable. Uh, his get off is good. His first step quickness is there. He's got power that he whips out on a bull rush and uses effectively. Uh, always gives the maximum effort on the field. Always one of these guys who's trying really hard. No questioning his effort. Doesn't have enough pass rush moves yet. Football IQ isn't really there. 
He doesn't diagnose run blocking as well as he needs to. He doesn't like diagnose what's going on and react to it appropriately. So I'm not really sure what to think here because he tested poorly, but I put him in about the fifth round because I do think there's some interesting flexibility here. And I like the fact that he can win with power. Yeah, I, I put him into the fifth because I felt like he did take a little bit more of a step forward this year uh, as a pass rusher and and got better. And so I'm thinking there's going to maybe be a little bit more upside to him. I did like the moves a little bit more than you did. I thought the a Euro step, two-handed swipe, a spin move, a long arm bull rush, a quick dip move um, with his shoulders that gets him free of blocks. And he usually employs that against the run where he'll try to just dip off the run and, and see if he can get around the guy before he gets his hands on him. I like that he really loads up his moves as a pass rusher and commits to it. Um, he's not going to give you counters. He's not going to chain moves together. But when he's got a first move that he wants, and because he has a couple that he can bring from his bag, he can really, really snap it in there and give it to you. Some of those guys kind of half hard it, you know, where they just sort of, well, I'm trying the move, but you're not really committed to fully trying it. You touched on one of the biggest things, I think, in his game that I've got to worry with him and why he does find in the fifth round. Um, though I do like some of what he brings in, 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 his, uh, in his bag, and that is the awareness in space. The awareness in space and losing track of the ball carrier and just getting too caught up on the block uh, happens over and over and over and over again with him on the tape. But I like the good overall effort. I, I wouldn't call him quite a high motor guy, but he works hard overall. Um, he's a good overall player, gives you some upside on both elements of that. Um, so I went I went fifth round with him on that, but uh, I can certainly see somebody saying sixth round too. You're in that area where I wouldn't split hairs when we get to the spot of the draft. Yeah, I can't go too wrong once you get to this part. At this point, this is where you're starting to look for guys who maybe will end up being more special teamers than defenders even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. 100%. This is definitely the – and then this draft in particular, Brendan, once we, I think we get into the fifth round of this draft, it doesn't matter whether it's edge or just about any other position, maybe absent cornerback and receiver, you're probably not necessarily finding that starter there at that point. It's, these are guys that are going to have a hard time, I think, fitting onto the roster when it's all said and done. Um, not without talent, but just that seems the likelihood to me in my eyes in evaluating these guys into this fifth, sixth round spot off this edge group in particular. Mm -hmm. You're in the same place? Yeah, yeah, I think I agree with that. I think that's generally been my assessment as well. I, I ended up putting a lot of these low-level edge players in like my seventh round, but it won't surprise me if they end up bumping up a little bit because mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't find enough guys that I think are better. <laughs> that's true it's 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 very possible and i think that could draw a little bit of this is the demand at that point in the draft in the fifth round well let's go with the uh longest guy in the entire draft let's go let's go take a look at this this is a guy that you look at his you look at his numbers brendan you know you look at his testing numbers you look at his uh arm length you go man this guy could be really interesting and then you turn on the tape miles yeah. cole texas tech yeah, so he's got 37-inch arms, basically, 37. I think that's the longest I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever seen that before in the NFL. Either. No, mm -hmm. 35. Um, good athlete, too, for a guy his size. He's 280. He's 280. He's not 250, so his 40 and 10-yard split are actually impressive. Only really has one year of any production at all, and it wasn't that much. Um, he, um, you know, three and a half sacks, six and a half tackles for loss. So he's a big dude with a giant wingspan, impressive athlete for his for his size. Texas Tech would line him up on the edge. They'd line him up inside, five tech, four I, three tech, all kinds of stuff like that. Got some first step quickness, actually. He's actually got first step quickness more than you would expect. He's got active hands that he can use to stack up blockers, and he's good at getting low to win leverage despite being 6'6", six, six. but uh, he doesn't have strength. He's not very strong, gets pushed around a little bit, rather limited in the variety of pass rush moves he uses, doesn't really have like a bevy of moves he can whip out. His height remains a concern, even though he's pretty good at sinking his hips. He's still 6'6". Mm -hmm. That's tough. Yeah. And I don't know, he might end up being like a guy who's too big and slow to play edge, but then he's too physically weak to play inside. He might just be a man without a position so I ended up putting him in the fifth round because I think the potential is there, but it's unlikely that it happens. Yeah, it's the physical potential from my same standpoint that as much as anything puts me there with Miles Cole in the fifth round, because quite honestly, by the production on the field, he'd be a seventh rounder. And and it's 
a guy that has a lot of things good happen prior to contact off the pre-snap. He gets low in his stance. As you said, being for a 6'6 guy, he still wins the leverage war a lot of times. He uses his arm length really nice. You feel it. He throws those long arms into the tackle. But my comparison for this in my little guide I was putting together, Brendan, is it's like the Looney Tunes, you know, where they, they bring out the big gun in the Looney Tunes and they're about to shoot it. And then when right they pull the trigger, there's just a little note that comes out the front of the barrel and it says bang. I feel like that's what happens with him where you're expecting this like off the snap, you know, it looks really good. He's coming off. He's going to win the leverage war arms lock out. And then he just gets pushed back, back down the field. You know, he gets out, outpowered basically, which is the part you're expecting to show up in his game, which is missing over and over and over on, on snap after snap. Teams were not afraid to run at him, Brennan. Teams were afraid to win the tape. I watched with Marshawn Nealon go at Marshawn Nealon. Teams were afraid to go at Darius Robinson. You know, Miles Cole needs to come into this draft with what he's bringing to know. With my size, I should be a dominant edge run defender. With my length, I should be a dominant edge run defender. There's really no excuses for the fact that it's so poor on tape with him and how he looked in that part. Because like you said, I think all those good attributes you mentioned about him, are, I agree with you. I saw the same thing. There is some explosiveness here. There is a little bit of, hey, I can get lower than I uh, normally a guy from my size should be able to. Um, but just the play on the field isn't there. Lack of awareness all across the board. No kind of plan as a pass rusher. He's got a, he's got a couple of moves, but no real counters. Um, just not much there to really work with as far as in the refinement of his game, Brady. He's got a long way to go. But boy, six foot six, 280, 37 long inch arms running a four, six, seven. They don't, they don't come down the line like that very often. And that is the part that has to push me for him into the fifth. Cause it's so unique. It's so, you know, big and just long and. Yeah. You know. I mean, would you rather draft this or would you rather draft some guy whose ceiling is like a special teamer, right? At yeah. least there's some upside here. So I, I am probably a little more interested in this one than I should be, but you know, this is how you find the next Reek Woolen. Yeah. And, and just like with Reek and, and his freakishness, there's guys like this and this freakishness, Brendan, it's say nothing of once every couple of drafts, you'll get it. Like you said, you know, 37 inch long arms. I can't remember another player at that size either. So it's, you do kind of look back at that and you go, hmm, well, hold on. Let's, let's really look at this one closely, even though it's not there on the tape, which I wouldn't normally do, but it's sometimes the measurables are the measurables where they're just too outstanding to deny a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. So the, uh, next, uh, Fifth round guy that I have on my list is going to be uh, Oregon player Jordan Birch. Mm. Yeah, I uh, did not get a chance at Birch actually. In fact, I'm hold on. Let me check and see if he declared. I feel like yeah, I was just about did. to do the same thing. I think he did too. Uh, we'll return to Oregon. Nope, he played. So skip this one. Okay. And sorry about this, folks. Some of these came in late with some of these guys. They didn't let you. Yeah. Know here. Yeah, sometimes him. they uh, sometimes they surprise you too. Like I would have thought Birch would have come out. I thought he would have done okay in this draft, but uh, I would have too. I was I would have been that uh, probably fifth round uh, range of it, I suppose, in that area. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's keep it going then. My next guy I've got is uh, Arkansas Edge, another big old power edge, Landon ja Landon Jackson. Yeah, uh, this one did declare, but I did not get a chance to look at this one. So this one. Uh, uh, this one, you go ahead and take this one away because I, yeah, I, I do not have notes on him. He's an interesting profile for the edge. He's big and lumbering, very little explosiveness, no lateral bounce. He does appear to have uh, the plus length to his game, plus power, but you know you would expect that for a guy at 6'7", 281 on the edge. Um, he does what round the arc well for his size. He does display a little bit of legit bend at that size, which is good to see. The book, He's got good bull rush power. Um, he can become a little bit too preoccupied with his blockers and sometimes lose track of the ball carrier, um, even when they're going past either of his shoulders. Okay effort, definitely would not call him high motor, and he was heavily rotated while showing just kind of that okay effort. Um, only one year of real production and ranked basically 164th best uh, edge by PFF last year, so that one-year production wasn't necessarily amazing. Um, I think he can be used all over the defensive line, Brendan. I think this is one of the few edges we've looked at in this class. A couple of these guys here that we talked about today, but this is one for sure that I think could be kicked into side to the three tech where he's got enough power to still hold up if you want to move him in there. Um, I think that he's okay against the run, but he's not as dominant as some of these bigger edges that we've talked about in this class. A guy that I do put in that fifth round is much, a little bit like to a lesser degree, like Miles Cole, where you're just as much looking at the physical the, the physical build and ability there that he's bringing more than you're looking at the actual production that he's put on the football field. Well, let's All keep right. it rolling. Let's keep it rolling here. Um, 
Solomon Bird out of USC. Solomon Bird. I think I had him. Well, let me see here. No, no, I missed out on this one too. Another Pac-12 guy. Another I actually Pac-12 missed guy. out on him. I think I'm a little familiar with him, but I don't have any notes on him. So if I feel like maybe they got deleted somehow. Dang it. I, I, I've done a couple of those on mine too, where I've had them all. Mm-hmm. In. Where'd that go? Uh, Four-year starter. He had a cluster of, he's got a cluster of core skills. I think he brings to the table here, Brendan, a little above average quickness, uh, but very strong bend to turn the corner and athletic for the position. I think high effort, good hand usage, understands how to use his long arms, 33 and five inch inch long arms. So they're pretty long. Um, He has some shake to get off the blocks, mainly when defending against the run. So he does not stay blocked in the run. I thought he was a really good effort in that part of it. Four forced fumbles this past year. You can see on tape he's trying to get his hand in there late on the quarterbacks and knock that ball out. So it's a purposeful thing that he brings, um, mm-hmm. which is unique. We don't have many of these edges in this class looking to try to you know strip and tomahawk chop and do those kind of things. But he kind of tries to do that, which is interesting. Um, he's coming light in the column of explosiveness and power. It's he's a little bit more of a finesse guy, I think, in how he tries to do what he does. Um, but I, I liked what he brought. He uses his hands well. He's got some natural length, got some natural bend. So there, you know, he's he can be a little violent with his hands at times. It's not consistently there, but it's a little bit there to give you the feeling like maybe it can show up in the long term. I think he is missing certain traits here to be a, a successful edge starter in the NFL, just specifically the you know power stuff and needing to lead, lean a little bit too heavily on the finesse, which you can only get away from that for so long. You've got to come back to some of the power, like Latou can give you a little bit of that power back on the other side, at least just a little bit. Braylon Trice comes back a little bit of that power on that to just kind of offset some of what they do. Bird just doesn't have that to call upon. He's got just that, just that finesse aspect. But fun little player out of USC, and again, four-year starter. So a guy for whatever he does provide should provide it pretty immediately at mm-hmm. the pro level, whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Let's go to my last fifth-round guy. I have and an interesting, another interesting guy because this is a Mike McDonald cat that he has seen, coached, and has been aware of. So a guy mm-hmm. that Seattle Seahawks fans should probably keep aware on their radar, and that is Bra- Braden McGregor. McGregor, six foot five, 257 pounds, 33 inch long arms. Yeah, not not bad measurables. Uh, well, what did I have? Okay, so not a lot of production at Michigan, but none of these defensive guys on Michigan have a lot of production because they're all sitting out midway through the third quarter. Yeah. And heavily rotated. That's the other thing. They're, mm-hmm. they're heavily rotated throughout the whole game too, in addition to that, before that occurs. Mm-hmm. I like the way he uses his hands. He can clear linemen out of the way and work his way through the traffic. With his hands, really good there. Has a couple of effective pass rush moves he can lean on. It's not just all speed or all power. He's bigger and heavier than most edge players, but I don't feel like he's a poor athlete for it. He's not one of these guys that like, oh, he's really slow because he's big. No, he's actually got reasonable edge athleticism. Um, He's not particularly strong with his anchor, and he doesn't really shed blockers that well um, once the lineman latches on, and he doesn't really have bend. So I think he'll probably be an okay off the bench edge rusher on passing downs. So I ended up putting him in the sixth round. I think he'll end up being a special teamer as much as anything, but um, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And uh, these Michigan guys, sometimes I think there's like a little bit of maybe unseen potential because they play so little in that defense. So maybe I could see him elevated to the fifth, but I put him in the sixth. Yeah, it's it's a tough assessment, Brendan. 400 snaps, so that's all you got to really go off of last year with that heavily rotated out with not playing some at the end of games, 26 tackles, four and a half sacks. Um, I, I like him a little bit more than you, I think, as far as the power edge set stuff goes to where he can lean on a little bit, I think, of being a run-stuffing edge off the fifth round. Again, in that pecking order we're talking about where you, you, know, you can get your high-quality one being Darius Robinson. You can get your slightly lesser quality one, but still really good in a Marshawn Nealon. You can go for your little bit like, okay, third rung on it to Brendan Jackson. And then like, okay, now you're to your fourth rung of looking for a power edge, Braden McGregor. Um, so I, this is one I love the fact that McDonald has the inside info on Brennan, because if you can pass on those other power edges and, and keep yourself from having to put your high picks to those guys earlier on, knowing this guy's going to foot the bill for what you need in this defense, because he's got that past history with it. I love that aspect of this. If this, if they pick him, I'll, I'll be operating from that assumption of Mike going, uh, I know he'll be perfectly fine and setting the edge. This is my power edge. This will be just, he, he will bring that just fine for what we need. And uh, I, that's why I slid him into that fifth round spot. Um, but I think your the things you mentioned about the negatives in his game are are apropos to a degree. I, I liked a little bit of the setting edge more than you did, but I 
I think, you know, losing track of the ball carrier, kind of just getting stuck on blocks. Um, not a guy with a lot that he's going to bring from a pass rush standpoint, I don't think necessarily. Um, he's got a nice little dip bounce inside where he can counter inside off a bounce that I liked where he starts off the edge and then just bounces right across the face of the tackle and gets back inside on him. Um, but still kind of a one trick pony leaning on power, leaning on bull rush over and over again is kind of what he does stack and shed kind of guy. Um, but I like him as maybe that, you know, if the, if McDonald takes him, then, you know, McDonald's like, Hey, I watched him two years ago and I know what this kid was going to be. And he's he, like, you said, got lost in the shuffle of all those guys. I mean, he's, but last year he's behind Mike Morris in this role, right? It's not, he just can't, you know, Mike Morris is a year ahead. So he's kind of having to wait his turn a little bit. All right. Sounds good to me. All right, so I, that is it for me on my fifth round edges. Do you have any other uh, fifth round edges here? Uh, let me get check Eric here. Watts, I think you had. Uh, I think uh, maybe I did, and I also had uh, Cedric Johnson in about this range. I think. Okay, so let's go with. Uh, we'll start out with Eric Watts, and then we'll All do right, Johnson. Let me find my notes on Eric Watts. Um. Another one of these kind of freakishly big guys, 6'6", 274, 35 and a qu three quarters arms. And he's got good testing numbers. He didn't test poorly because of his size. He's actually really good athlete for his size. Um, surprising amount of bend for a bigger rusher. He's got legitimate bend. He's got experience playing inside and outside on that UConn defense. His burst around the edge is quick and rapid. He converts speed to power really well. Uh, holds up against the run pretty well. But it's kind of weird that he's not productive in college. Like he's got all those things to his advantage. He's playing on UConn. Where's the production? Where, where's, the, where's the beef, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the question with him. Uh, he doesn't really have any moves. He just completely depends on out-athleticing out everybody, which is not a real word. But um, he doesn't really have the ability to win on a technician level. Leverage is a struggle big time. He's 6'6". And um, he will probably have issues playing on the edge in the NFL. He might have to bulk up a little bit and throw and slide inside. Mm -hmm. um, but I would not mind taking a shot here because he is such an interesting athlete in about the fifth round. Yeah, I went with the sixth round grade. I, I found it to be just kind of a big and unexciting defensive end. Um, he is solid against the run, but then there's holes in that area of his game. So these other power edges that we've talked about where I, I have a little more faith in what they bring off their power of their edge with him, it's he's got to win the leverage war. And if he doesn't win the, win the leverage war, then he's bad against that run play. That's a lost rep for him. And it's, and it's holy for a guy at six, six, it's going to be times you're going to lose the leverage war at that size off the edge. And you've got to be able to call upon some power there to kind of hold on at points and he can't do it. It's a loss for him. If he loses the leverage war. Um, I thought he had a good motor plays to the echo of the whistle chases down plays backside. He absolutely abuses tight ends when they try to block him off the edge uh, that stood out. I mean, it was, it was nice. So there was some hard edge stuff that he can kind of set here to, to a degree, Brendan. Um, but I did feel like his awareness and space is also challenged, which when we talk about this guy, not necessarily having to me any upside as far as a pass rusher and we go back to, okay, your run stuffing edge. Okay. But you got to win the leverage war. Then your awareness and space is challenged. It's not clean there for me. I can't just rely on that to be a plus trade in what you're bringing. And that's really why I had to knock him down in the sixth round. I also felt like he was just taking too wide of routes as a pass rusher where it, it's right. it's really – he winds it really far around on the bend extra. He ends up taking a lot of extra steps to get around the edge of that arc versus other guys that are just very efficient to getting getting to the spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, it, it's a, kind of a guy that I probably like a little more than I should because I see – the athleticism, but he's probably not a good football player. I get that. But um, again, we're down here in the fifth round in a pretty shallow draft. So yeah. And these are all, these are all, you know, you're taking a, taking a, a wing and a prayer on any of these guys for, for where they go. And he's got some stuff he does bring size is legitimate 35 and a half inch arms. I mean, it's, he's not empty from, uh, from having some, some stuff that he does bring to the table. So uh, the raw goods are there, Brendan, with this guy. All right. Well, how about uh, Cedric Johnson out of Ole Miss? All right, so Cedric Johnson's a pretty interesting one. Got to scroll up a little bit because he's actually been rocketing up the big boards lately in a way that I don't totally agree with, but I kind of get it. Old Miss, only 21. Most of the guys in this area of the draft are guys like 23, 24. So his age is notable, 6'3", 260 pounds. Decent production the last two years for Old Miss. He's a great athlete for his size, ran a 4'6'3", 1'6", 110-yard split, jumped out of the building. He's got leg drive. He can actually drive people off the ball. Uh, uh, excuse me. He can actually drive people back when they're trying to anchor down. 
He's got some moves that he can use. He showed the ability to line up all over on the old Miss defense and his initial steps out of his stance are lightning quick. Now he's still got to add some more to his pass rush bag. I think he's a little out of control. I read one uh, report that I agreed with that co compared him to a bull in a China shop. He's just kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes he runs himself out of the play because he's too aggressive and his anchor needs work. I kind of feel like he'll be a five tech in the NFL. And I think he'll probably find his way. But at the same time, I think there's a lot that needs to be worked on. So I went with like round five for me. Yeah, he's a, he's got an interesting initial profile to me. Um, I think the get off is labored with him. So we get to that place where the guy's got bend, but the, the get off is not there. He doesn't have any real twitchiness to his game. Um, and then when he's a pass rusher to me, he's just constantly trying to hand swipe or catch the offensive tackles risks and wrists and raise them up over their head. I mean, it's one of those two things he kept going to over and over again. Can't deny 73 pressures over the past three seasons to go along with 16 sacks. So, you know, he has been a very, very good pass rusher over this time period, which is probably why he's maybe vaulting up some boards in that, in that view of things. I think he is a bit of a negative in the run game. Um, I think old miss at times tried to take him off the field and, and goal line situations, knowing run situations, they were trying to kind of keep him protected from that. I worry where really his best asset is just that bend and that he's not got as much of the explosiveness to lean on at the, at the start of the rep. <coughs> So the lineman can kind of stay with his bend going throughout the whole course of the rep because the lineman's not having him quick to a spot, beating him to a spot, and then the bend. It's just the bend to me and what I saw from him on tape. So that knocked him down to me of more of a sixth, seventh round uh, uh, player. But definitely got some some a, a good athletic profile, and there's some, some there is something to his game. Can't deny it. 73 pressures out of Ole Miss over the last three years in that conference is uh, legitimate, legitimate production. Mm. Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, is that the last of your, uh, fifth round guys? I think so. Yeah. Not him. Yeah. We already did him. No. Um, oh, I had a uh, Xavier Thomas in the fifth round. Actually, I think okay. Xavier Thomas of Clemson undersized a little bit, two forty four six two. um, tested. Okay. Overall, he's got a quick first step. Got some pass rush moves that he can use, so he compare, so he combines the quickness around the edge with the ability to win as a technician. Uses his hands well. He's capable of holding up on the edge against the run, and he even shoots gaps pretty well. He doesn't shed all that well. He's not really able to get blockers off of him when they're engaged. His anchor can be a little bit weak, and he doesn't really have a bull rush. So I think he'll probably be one of those guys who rotates in on passing downs and provides nice pressure because he's got the combination of quickness around the edge and moves, mm -hmm. but he won't provide much else. So fifth round pick for me. Yeah. He's a uh, high energy undersized pass rusher, but he does have some good awareness. Um, he does feel small, but he didn't help. He, I might watch the tape and then Brennan, I felt like he did hold up well against the run, except in those moments where the technique couldn't save him. You know, when the raw tonnage, basically got to him. It was not a lot he could do, which to your point, I think the upside here on him is best case scenario, rotational pass rusher that you sort of save from having to really play much of the run. Um, reasonable quickness, never say die attitude. You know, he's going to play, he's going to play hard throughout. That might help him as much as anything to get drafted. Brennan is just that he is going to play um, life on the line kind of energy. And, and you know, there's a lot of these guys that call it brain where you do feel that that's not what they're bringing. You know, a lot of guys that are just giving you that sort of just, am I done with the rep yet? Is the rep done yet? Is the rep done yet? Um, for being shorter, I, I, he doesn't offer width or, or, or thickness. And it would just feel like he's going to get ground to the gr ground down to the NFL level. I feel like he's just really the undersized stuff could get to him. He is a senior with six years of college experience. Um, so the other thing I have a problem here with them on it on, on that upside hope though, Brennan, is that in that six years, the production's kind of been at about the same place from the start to the finish. It's That's not true. really gone up and more. And so I go, mm, we go, is, is it going to suddenly now go up more at the pro level? I don't, I'm, I'm reticent to believe so, which is why I dropped him down just a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that was about it for me in the fifth round. Yeah. 
All right, let's move on to the uh, sixth round, and we're getting down to kind of my last few here, Brendan. In fact, we're the last guy I've got in uh, my seventh round is going to be Andrew Chatfield out of Oregon State. Yeah, I, I did not take a look at this one. I think the aggregate has him in like the 400s, so I ended yeah. up not taking a look at him. We're, get, we're getting deep, and there's there's not a lot here. Just undersized edge at his best, rushing the passer, using a combination of uh, better-than-average quickness and bend. He's got a kind of a patented move that's a double-hand swipe that gets him free a lot of times. Um, he does get off the line of scrimmage with a sense of urgency, looking to attack the edge. Mainly goes to that hand swipe to try and fully clear himself as he's rounding the arc. Kind of goes to it maybe a little bit too much. But below, below average lateral movement, just an okay athlete, no real counters, no inside moves at all, except for a slow spin move that doesn't work. Um, if he's initially stymied, it's game over for the most part. I, I don't see any upside to him as a run defender. He's not strong at setting the edge or getting off blocks. He's not particularly strong or aware in space. Uh, his zone drops are very good. So he gives you that. He does get his hands up in the short passing game, can knock some balls down and, and be active in that part. But I think he'll struggle to make a, a final roster if he is drafted. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Well, give me your uh, your final ones on this. Uh, well, I did have a look at one ZTF. You familiar with ZTF at all? ZTF? Z Zion Tupola Fatui. Oh, I didn't have a chance to look at him. No, that was one I didn't quite get to, but I'm yeah. aware. That's the UW kid, right? Yes. Um, really interesting one. I think it was 2020. He had like seven sacks in three games to start the year, and he never ascended to those heights again or anywhere close. Mm -hmm. So just uh, kind of, uh, I don't know. He peaked when he was uh, 19 years old or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, even last year for a national championship competing team, a team that won every game except one, he only had three and a half sacks and a 66.2 PFF grade. So I don't know what happened, but he does give effort. He's got zone coverage drop experience. He knows how to drop into coverage well. He uses his hands well. He plays with discipline. He can shed blockers. But uh, he just doesn't have the athleticism to really keep up. He's not strong enough to hold up when trying to set the edge. And there's just been general regression every year since he kind of mm. broke out. Um, he um, changed the direction, doesn't really have any of that going on. So I said sixth round value for him. I think he'll be okay as a part-time edge rusher in a 3-4 defense. Okay. But I, I can't imagine. I mean, clearly at this point, it's not coming back. He tore his Achilles or something. And yeah, I think he tore his Achilles in 2020. And it's just never been the same. It goes that way sometimes, man. That's one of those brutal injuries where, you, you know, we like to think medical science has it all solved, but there's sometimes that you don't come back at a hundred percent. How about the other Murphy in uh, UCLA, Grayson Murphy? Grayson Murphy. Okay. I didn't have that guy either. All right. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, UCLA. Not much to say here. He's got a nice frame. He's got good closing speed, high effort, sets the edge well. He's good at staying alive after initially getting beat and being able to find a way to win the rep, even if it takes a while. But he doesn't have bend. He doesn't have good hands. Only a handful of worthwhile pass rush moves. He's got really short arms, so he can't shed blockers at all, 30 and a quarter. Hmm. So there's really not much to say here. He might be a pretty good early down defender, I guess. I kind of feel like his only chance is to bulk up and try to play five tech somewhere. So I'd say seventh rounder, probably not happening. Mm. Okay. And I had one more guy, one more. All guy. right. Jalen Harrell of Michigan, another Wolverine. Did you uh, see anything on Jalen Harrell? I didn't, uh, I haven't seen anything on, but I do have him here on the, um, I do have his measurements here. Okay. Six, four, two fifty. Decent long arms, nice vert. So he's got some explosion. Six and a half sacks last year, which on Michigan's defense is actually good because yeah. they're rotating so hard. So he's good dropping back into coverage. He's got a good quick first step and he's able to pair that with inside moves. So his favorite thing to do is like get the outside, get the step he needs on the edge, get the offensive tackle to overset, trying to get back to him and then cutting back to the inside. He's good at that. He's got good arm length. He should be able to add some weight if he needs to. I think he does need to get stronger. He doesn't have enough pass rush tricks right now. All he has is the uh, kind of, you know, the thing where he goes outside and then comes back inside after the guy oversets. 
and he doesn't shed that well, even though his arm length is okay. So he's, um, I don't know. There isn't a lot here to be into. He doesn't really have moves. He can't really play against the run. He can't shed blockers. So I put him in about my sixth round or so. And that's I'm all I had. Might be another Mike McDonald special where much like uh, McGregor where, you know, you, he has maybe some insider knowledge there where you're picking a player there where the, he's got that insider knowledge where if other teams knew they would have picked him a little bit higher, but he knows that they can wait till him and, and get a really good player later in the draft at times mm -hmm. who might still have some potential because of that insider knowledge. You know, you, right. you hope you can maybe lean on that a little bit. You know, remember with Carroll, that was the thing with him walking in. I know you don't remember, but I mean, more to the audience. When Carroll first came in here, he had that insider knowledge of those players. Mm -hmm. He had recruited those guys in their homes. He knew a lot about them that other coaches yeah. and other front offices didn't know. And we were able to use that to our advantage in order to be able to find guys later on that actually were really good players in the draft. And maybe that's a, the case here with a guy like Jalen or with that McGregor guy. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, that's about as deep as I went on this edge class, but uh, it's, it's a pretty good one, actually. I think it doesn't have... Like, I feel like Dallas Turner isn't quite on the level of the truly, like, elite edge rushers in this league. Uh, like, usually every draft will have one edge rusher that's a little bit beyond where Dallas Turner is as a prospect. Like, last year you had Will Anderson. Mm -hmm. But he's, uh, it, it's a good crop, I think. I think it's a solid crop. I do with you as well on it. And um, who is our third edge after the kid out of Texas tech last year. So we had Anderson, we had the, the Texas tech kid. And then what was the, who was the third guy? Was it Will McDonald at that point? That sounds right. Yeah. So it's, I, I think it's overall a little stronger, especially in the first round with chop Robinson in there. And, and these guys all, I think do have good floor, good upside. There's not as much, I think, I think mean, chop gives you the bust, but with the bust, you're also getting the highest upside, maybe guy of any of the edges in the first round. So even with that, you're getting at least something with that on the return. Right. Um, as far as the flip side to that. So I, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's an interesting edge class. It's not the, the strongest we've seen. You know, we've seen some of these edges where we can see 10 guys take it in an edge group. Um, it ain't 2020, Brennan, you know what I mean? But um, it is a, it's a good edge group. And I think the key is we talked about at the top of this, be it, especially in the case of a guy like Dallas Turner, when you look at those first 15 picks ahead of us and the amount of quarterbacks that'll go and the amount of receivers that'll go and the amount of tackles that'll go, a Brock Bowers that might go could leave you sitting there at 16 with an inability to trade back because you don't have a partner. And the best value guy that you have on the board, very, very feasible to me, Brendan, I'd love to know if you feel the same, is a Dallas Turner potential type looking you in the face at that point if he isn't taken earlier. Yeah, and I think the decision's pretty easy at that point. I don't think that's something you should be resigned about at all. I, I, Dallas Turner's far beyond what you typically see at 16 in an average draft, I think. Agreed. And I do think you're getting the best of any position in a draft at 16. Uh, we're getting the best of this. Last year, we got the best receiver at 20, pretty much. Uh, you know, you go, well, that's, uh, I, if I'm doing that to start my draft off, then I'm getting the best of a positional group 16 picks on in. I, I've, I think I've started the pathway to having a real successful draft throughout the rest of it. I've mm -hmm. begun it out in a nice way, in a proper way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all for it. Let's go. Let's go. Well, that is the uh, that is your edge group here for the 2024 NFL Draft. A lot of interesting guys throughout. Looking power edges. Keep an eye on that. You saw we talked about about four or five of those kind of guys who might foot that bill in a variety of spots. You get in the draft. Might have the value at 16 landing with one of these edges. So it is a group to pay attention to and could be a group that the Seattle Seahawks look to address. Because I don't think, like you said with Daryl Taylor, I think he's on some uh, thin ice and uh, especially with these contracts signed recently, that if you can free some space up and there's a spot you could free some space up, it's got to be a kind of a, maybe a potential draw for John, especially if he's getting a player as a true upgrade over the top of um, even what they look at where, where Derek Hall is currently sitting. You know, we're getting mm -hmm. a chance to not only upgrade Taylor, but we're also getting a chance to upgrade Hall and then give us the flexibility for a Chenna a year from now. You see this with the Eagles. Like Eagles last year took Nolan. They took Nolan with the intention and thought that – Hassan Reddick, a guy that they feel like has been trying to go a little bit more for sacks and not as, not as willing and wanting to play the run, kind of going to get those, let me get my sack numbers. They get a little bit of that built-in insurance for now where they can move off of him, save his money. They've got his heir waiting in the wings there with Nolan. And uh, I think the Hawks could potentially do something similar here with one of these high-end edges, Brendan. Absolutely. And I would be all for it. I know some people would be like, oh, we don't need an edge. We need this and that. I, I don't get... I've, I've been fighting the urge to get wrapped up in that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff doesn't matter. 
At the end yeah. of the day, this team is – we don't have a great team. The Seahawks team is not great right now. They need help in a lot of areas. So taking the best player available to you at your pick, who whatever position they play, cannot be that bad of an idea. I 100% agree. And uh, I think that's a great way to finish us off on this because I think that is really – Value, value, value. You and I are both here. We're here almost at a militant state, but it, we're here, folks, because me and Brandon have followed this draft when we didn't operate out of value. And we've seen the last two years where you have operated off of value and the returns that that's really brought back to the team by staying in that mentality, staying hardlined in that mentality, which is a tough thing, I think, for NFL franchises to do because there's always the draw to need. It's always a pull, you know, like a, like a bad habit, Brendan, you know, I need that smoke. I need that need. I need that need. Well, we are, uh, folks, going to be back here in just a mere couple days. So we're going to continue this. Uh, every few days, you're going to get a BNB show here until we get through all of these positions. So we will be back here in a couple days to look at another very important position for your Seattle Seahawks being who's going to be the middle linebacker of the future. Who's going to be the will linebacker of the future? Who's going to be the guy to take over long-term for Bobby? Yes, we signed a couple of inside linebackers, but these guys are on one-year deals. So, Brendan, there's uh, definitely a high, high, high probability the Hawks are not only going to look at, I think, taking one inside linebacker, but potentially two of them here. So you guys definitely want to tune in for those shows, uh, that show here in on uh, Tuesday, as we'll be doing the breakdown on that. All right. Yeah, that's going to be fun. That's uh, that's a position that I think there should be a lot of compelling interest in because there's nothing long term on this team at that position. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's some really fun players in the inside linebacker in this draft and throughout early rounds. to There's not a first round guy, but there's from second to, I think, fifth round. You can find some guys in there that could potentially be starters. And so uh, it'll be fun to kind of break these guys down and go through what they bring, because there's also a real diversity of the skill set of middle linebackers. You get your short squatty bodies. You got your hyper athletic big guys like Cooper. You got your junior Colson just knows how to play the position. So it also gives you a lot of different uh, different types in this. You got your coverage guys. You got your, your run stuffing guys. So uh, we'll have a lot of different parts to cut up on that. But we will be back, folks, in just a couple days. Do me this favor if you could for me now, and that's just hit the like button on this video. Subscribe up to both my channel here, The Hawks Nest, and also Seahawks Brendan Nelson on his side of things. As we now get closer and closer here to the draft, we are almost just about a week out. So we can just about smell it at this point. The draft, it's almost here. Almost all the prep work is almost finished. But, you know, you've been tuning in here, so you're going to be knowing and having the knowledge come draft day of what's going on and where players are going to be picked. So thank you. To all of you guys for watching, hitting that like button and supporting us in the fashion as you guys do always here. Very much appreciated. Thank you, Brendan, for coming on out here on a Saturday night and doing and chopping up with me. Thank you. Uh, we will be back in a couple days, but until that time period, please do not you guys ever forget. Gotta let him know, Brendan. Mm -hmm. Go Hawks. Go Hawks.